Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to item I-1. Good evening, Commission. I-1, um, staff is seeking legislative intent and permission to advertise an amendment to the zoning regulations to allow or prohibit shipping containers as residential accessory structures. Um, currently, our code does not specifically mention shipping containers. We have a zoning interpretation that considers sh shipping containers as commercial e equipment and does not allow them to be utilized on residential uh, property. And this is because the residential zoning classification establishes characters that the land is devoted to single family residential development and it stipulates that the accessory structures are compatible with the surrounding residential. The code also mentions that semi-trailers and tractor trailers and step vans and etc. are considered commercial equipment. So for this reason we are seeking um, direction from the board to see how they would like to regulate shipping containers. So the first option that we have proposed would be to basically codify the current in interpretation which would prohibit them as res in residential zoning and agricultural zoning classifications. The second option that we have presented would be to allow shipping containers for the use of residential um, accessory storage buildings in all residential zoning classifications and residential agricultural zoning classifications pretty much as we currently are regulating um, accessory structures. So that would be the most permissive. The um, third option would be in between the two and that would be to allow the shipping containers as uh, residential accessory storage buildings in those zoning classifications but develop a, a set of criteria and conditions that would allow them to be permitted. So we have included that information in your um, agenda report. If you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer those for you. Commissioner Pritchett. Yes, ma'am. This item, we tabled this a while ago because 95% of these are up in my district in District 1. And more of the, um, I don't know, it's maybe rural, but maybe not because it's in residential. And we have a lot of these containers that people have been using for storage and um, I, I maybe small shops in their backyard. So we had a lot of code enforcements too. So you guys gave us a little bit of time to start figuring out where we're going to go with these. And I think I like option three, if you guys wouldn't mind having a little discussion with me. I think they're appropriate where they are, but I think there has to be some kind of criteria as far as setbacks and uh, how they're placed, if they're placed safely, and um, to make sure we just don't end up having a junkyard in the neighborhood, we have to have these regulated a little bit. And so on the criteria commission, if, if you guys would read through that, I did like option three because it's the hybrid of the two that they brought. I don't think we should limit the size of the containers or the lot requirements because I think the setbacks will kind of do that by itself. But I think all of the other items that you listed, um, Mr. Cockings, is appropriate. And I think we need to maybe have you guys come back with some recommendations. My biggest concern of these, and I guess we'll have to have a conversation on these, is these are from China, most of them. And we don't know what type of paint they used on them. We don't know what's in the materials. And so I, I think they could be a little bit risky. So I would be concerned, and again, I don't know how we're going to you know, come back with information or how far you get them cleaned down because I know people are using them. But I don't know that I'd want to move my family into one of these because you really don't know what kind of materials come out of China and they don't take them back because of the shipping so we got the surplus of them. That's why they're so cheap right now. But I would just give a recommendation to the community as you're doing this to proceed with some caution and to take the steps you need to do to protect your family. But that's my thought, Commission. Oh, we got a full set of lights here. Are they old? No. Nope. They're oh. old. I punched twice, didn't I? Sorry. Is to maybe option number three and have some requirements put on it so they could be used like for maybe sheds or, or storage buildings, but they'd be just, they'd be more of a fit than in a neighborhood. Commissioner Lober? 
A few thoughts with respect to that. Um, based on my, my conversations with staff, there was a concern brought up regarding uh, the shipping containers that have been altered to either put in windows or doors um, with that potentially compromising the integrity. Um, I'm open to essentially anything, but I think it's something that we ought to at least discuss. Um, if we are going to allow uh, shipping containers without there being a particular size limit, uh, a, couple, a couple comments uh, that I have with respect to that, and I, I don't know that this is what anyone envisions anyway, but I, I don't think that we should permit them to be in, in any way we draft this place between the front entry of the house and the road. Um, the other thing that we may want to at least talk about is precluding them from being visible uh, from adjacent properties, whether we wholly preclude it or we limit it to a certain number of feet over an obstruction, whether it's a, a fence or a shrub. Uh, I think we should at least have the conversation, and if it ends up being something that folks don't want, then that's fine, but I, I think we, we ought to at least bring that up. Commissioner Tobia. Thank you, and I think we've started to touch on points of why uh, option three is terrible. Uh, we are going to have so many restrictions on these things. They have to be at a 37 degree angle and visible from the North Star on every other month's <laughs> Wednesday. And um, I'm just, I, I, I understand the predicament that Commissioner Pritchett is in, and I think it can be handled with less red tape, and that's what option two is. We, talk, we, we start adding these regulations, and there's a lot of redundancy that's that's located. And an example would be um, prohibiting stacking of containers. I think that probably speaks to height requirements. I guarantee you that every zoning class or the ones that these are in probably have some sort of height requirements already. So we're already dealing with that. Um, and, you know, Commissioner Pritchett mentioned that some of these may look awful. Um, I, I don't doubt that. But if you drive through any of our districts, you will see houses that look awful. Um, um, yeah, uh, we, we, we talk about advertisements on, on these, I think, was one of them. Um, do we restrict advertisements on certain houses? Um, we're just going to turn into uh, a 25-page document that is going to be extremely, extremely uh, uh, redundant and cause probably more problems than, than, than what we have. So I think motion two, which um, would have the same setbacks as any other structure, would have the same requirements as far as uh, height, would have the same requirements for building standards. Uh, I don't think that we should treat these any different because where they're made, my phone, uh, is made in, in, in China, and uh, it is barely out of my hand. So I think when we start arbitrarily deciding um, where things are made, it's probably not the best direction for this um, uh, commission to go in. So uh, I would, I would uh, certainly side on option two, and if, if we have some concerns with uh, visual concerns or anything of that nature. Um, let's look at changing code altogether instead of just changing code specifically for this one type of structure. That would that would be uh, my thought on this. Commissioner Pritchett, I actually kind of like to till I started thinking about. Like, it's funny you mentioned stacking them. Where well, you might have like two-story residence there, but these things stacked could be very dangerous. So this is just like a whole nother thing, and these are big old heavy things. So maybe we could do two and then add a few little extra safety modifications in there that wouldn't necessarily be on a typical shed in the backyard. So even, so I, I hear you on that, Commissioner Tobias, and I'm with you. I, I mean, we don't need to put any undue regulations on anything that we w wouldn't normally do with the sheds, except these things are so big and heavy Maybe we could do three with all the two stuff, but make sure we have a few more safety items in place. Does that make sense? Uh, Madam Chair? Sure. So, uh, and I guess this would be for Tad. Um, I know have have bu uh, built a couple houses, you know, many inspections take place. Um, I want to go, uh, let's say we went with option two, and I decided to... Uh, you know, build a three-level container shed out there. Can you tell me how the, assuming we went with option two, would there be any 
inspection process or would I just all of a sudden get a crane and stack three <laughs> of them up and they would be there? I, uh, so when we looked at this from the Florida Building Code standpoint, we looked at the, the container in an unaltered state. And when it's unaltered, we feel that it meets the uh, building code. The requirement and the concern would be wind load and tying them down just like you do with any shed or uh, storage building. Once you start stacking them, I think that we would be altering that. And what we would have to look at would be getting an engineer to, to um, certify that it meets the requirement of the Florida building code at that stand, from that standpoint. And Similar like what we did with tiny homes, if you remember. I got, I got it. So, so help me here. Um, couldn't that be, f couldn't that be, in option two? I mean, wouldn't we go through? Wouldn't we go through the same building codes the way we did if I was building a, a permitted structure on the back of my uh, property? Would, um, wouldn't, wouldn't I need a professional engineer to sign off on it the same way I would with any other structure? Once you. Um so I think all the options except for option one would, would require some sort of permitting. You know, that, would, that way we could get the, the tie down. With, would, with sheds, we do do an inspection, so we would be handling them similar to that. Okay. Typically, when you get a shed, there is a Florida product approval included in that, which demonstrates that it meets the uh, Florida building code. And that, and so those number, that product no, information is given to the building department, and then they look at it and, and they take it from there. And so it out. it would be, uh, I'm neither professional nor an engineer. So uh, it would be completely arbitrary uh, for me to say two is safe and three is not so safe. Um, but if we relied on your department and. Um, the Florida to interpret the Florida building code, um, why would we need to arbitrarily add anything above, you know, like a three or four or two or whatever the heck it is? Because I'm concerned about safety too. Are, would option two provide for safety uh, if there was a permitting process? Would you ever permit a structure that didn't meet wind load requirements, whether it was altered or unaltered, I guess, is my, is, is, is my no, question. No, I think that that's what the permitting process would demonstrate that they meet the Florida Building Code. I, I think that when we look at the stacking and coming up with this, what we were looking at was the aesthetic and the impact to the neighborhood. You know, I mean, and, and I say that from the standpoint of, Today, we, we view these as commercial equipment. They haven't been viewed as something that was customary to the residential classifications. So if the board is looking at moving that direction, then they, to limit that impact, they may want to take in the height consideration, perhaps some of the um, advertisements and the colors that they have been painted as a shipping container may not be customary to the uh, residential character of the neighborhood. So that, that's that's why we yeah, so threw to that be very, in. It's yeah, to be very clear, all of that is a aesthetic, it's not safety. Is that assuming if we went through two, you would feel comfortable with the aesthetic nature of, sorry, not the aesthetic nature, with the safety uh, of, of those as structures. Is that fair to say? Assuming there was a... If they were not altered or if they were altered and we had an engineer certification, Correct. I believe that that would satisfy. Okay, you'd sign off on that. You would not sign off that they were uh, pleasing structures, though. That, that, that is correct. <laughs> Similar to tiny homes. Okay, and, and one last, does your department make any of those determinations in any other type of building uh, structure that, that it is pleasing to the eye, or are you merely looking at safety and, and code? Safety and code. Thank you. I just got one more thing. Commissioner Pritchett. Okay, that's pretty good clarification. So let me ask this, because this was the other thing that, that had me have a little hesitation, because typically people don't put up a shed and move into it. So if we classify it as two, then we're not going to be still concerned about them moving into it without the right permitting what, what, at that point, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. What we're looking at here is modifying the accessory structure okay. for storage. So okay. we are not looking at allowing these, or, or I did not, if 
well, let me say I don't think it was the board's intent when we got this assignment to use them as an accessory structures for like living facilities okay. or for what we consider like a mother-in-law. Okay, so that's still that's something. still cool if we do number two because that's well, kind of why I look like number three too because it had sure. that. But two would be cool with that. Okay. Yeah, two two would be fine. You know, would be we would be looking at that same thing as it would just be storage. Okay. Um, but two, you you lose the aesthetic quality. You lose what would be considered aesthetics or screening. Okay, so but if they have homeowner associations, they're going to have to comply by that anyways. And if they don't, they can paint it psychedelic now if they want it to, right? That would be for the homeowners. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And we could just put the stacking in there, correct? Still, even if we went with number two, we could just prohibit the stacking. I, I think that if the, well, if we're going to look at some other criteria, then we could, then it would be, I think we're kind of in three, you know, we're, we're looking at the permitted pieces of it, what but the conditions three isn't would be. All or nothing. You know no, I mean? no ma'am, I think three is just the idea of, of, you know, ideas of what the board may consider to, to lessen that impact if they, if they so thought. Um, if you're concerned about them stacking, then they would ha that would be alter. There would be altered in some nature, and we would have to get an engineer certification for them to be stacked. Mr. Bate, yeah, I just wanted to highlight what uh, what Tad was saying because really in three, if any of the bullets in three were things a commissioner or the or the board was interested in being considered, then I would suggest for, since this is for legislative intent. It should be as broad as you would want to consider. You could always narrow it, but we wouldn't be able to expand it um, without re-advertising. So as you look at that, you want to make sure that you include as many of the bullets that you might want to consider. At this and I'm point. not even saying I have an issue with stacking because if somebody stacks something, I don't know at that point if it would be used as an accessory storage. It would be more for somebody who wanted it. Right. So and we have the setback requirement and we just we just put through an ordinance that took us how long with the tiny homes so as far as like regulation and details it was it was crazy the amount of details we had in the, for that so shipping containers shouldn't be that difficult to we just use this as storage and we should be fine right yeah. commissioner lober just wanted to invite miss bentley to chime in if there are any legal concerns she has not yet. I think uh, Mr. Abati put you on the right track with the breadth of the ad. Sounds good. Thank you. Commissioner Pritchett. So I'm going to make a motion to do option three because we can turn it into option two for legislative intent. Is that correct? Okay. I'll second so it. That way it's broad, and then we can narrow it down, which I'm probably going to like option two, but then we can hear all the um, public that I have and, and hear what they're happy with. And, and we may learn with. something, yeah. you know, in the interim. Right. Okay, so that's okay. my motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett. And a second. Second by Commissioner Lober. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a card. I feel terrible. I'm so sorry. I have one card on I-1. Yeah. I mean, not lots of cards, well, just we, one. I'm sorry. Come on up. Yeah, we can always reconsider. Yes. Mr. Atwell, I apologize. We had so many cards. In, uh, we'll if do. you could just see my work area up here, well, I apologize. Very broadly. I yes, it's very broad. So if you're interested in the, uh, us approving them, then... Yes, I am. That's a good thing because yes, we just did. It's a real good okay. thing. <laughs> well, my name is Jeff Atwell. I live at 3775 Felda Street, Coco. And Where did this come I'm from? here about the shipping containers. I want to thank all of the commissioners for looking into this. My case number is actually in that. It's 17CE02269. I have two shipping containers. I had to remove them because of the interpretation of 11. Dash zero one. I got our property um, at Felda Street rezoned from GU to AU to help with the size of the accessory structures. I'm going to put a roof over both of mine, sort of connect them together, so it'll look like a single structure. 
and it will be sitting on pillars. It won't be sitting on the ground. And it will be strapped to the ground just like you would a building like Ted Shed's. But on Ted Shed's, I could take a claw hammer and throw at one of them and go through the side of the building. And my Connex box, you could do that and it would bounce off. So there's a big difference there. And um, I hope you'll let us take care of this. And I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm also thinking about everyone else that has these storage containers that they're using. And I also want to thank all of the people that have been on my side to get this done, and also the staff of Rita Bridges, because I've been pestering them for eight months. Every week I stop by. Thank you. I apologize for us missing the card. And Lyndon Campbell, you're on the other side. We care about what you have to say, so don't think we don't. We care about what you have to say. It wasn't missed on purpose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Does this work? I yeah, uh, should. Yes. Might need to turn it on. What do I do? Don will help you out. Okay. We sat through the puppies. Yeah. No, no, I no. think they're new. No. I can't keep track. I'm pressing twice in a row. Relax. Yeah. There's two of them. This is anticlimactic because you already voted, so try and keep a sense of humor. You have a name and date of birth. Pardon? Name? Oh. Lyndon Campbell, 5005 Fishtail Palm. Uh, I was a little disturbed of how this was going. I understood you all were Republican. And in fact, some talked about defending business and being business friendly. The prohibitions that occurred here did a lot of damage to small business. The groves are full of small business. I wouldn't be surprised if half of them out there are running small businesses out of their home. I know a couple of these specifically were harmed. <coughs> I, I thought Republicans were for smaller government and business friendly. How it's been doesn't seem to be. Uh, the connexes were their business. This is increasing government intrusiveness. Uh, the staff report, while they mentioned a few locals, they referred to Miami, which is a democratic hotspot. And then they went all the way to the west coast of the United States to the socialist centers in California and Portland, Oregon, San Diego and Portland for references as to how to decide. That disturbs me a little. Uh, something that wasn't mentioned, I stopped and talked to Commissioner Lober about this issue, and he said they wouldn't want it out in Lansing Island, and I absolutely agree. If somebody was really kooky and tried to put one in, there probably should be zoning to prevent it, because I don't think the neighbors would be very happy. However, when you move out into agricultural, not residential, agricultural areas, the, the remote, the backwoods, like a good part of Canaveral Groves. I, I haven't done an accurate count, but I would estimate currently 20 or 30 percent, and that's probably conservative, already have these. You may not see them, they're there. You got to look. Uh, it's appropriate to agricultural operations. It works very well, it's efficient. Uh, all sorts of small business that is ag-related. The county gives specific exclusion for steel buildings for residential applications. I'm sorry I didn't make up enough. I'd like you to look, if you can, it requires looking around, but the building on the bottom is an arch building that is legal by code, whereas on the top is a container. It's made out of the same material. The big difference is a container is only eight or nine feet tall, and that other one is 25 feet tall. If something's an eyesore, to me it's the big one, not the little one, because the little one looks like a little Ted shed. If you need a pitched roof, is that the problem? It's not hard to put a pitched roof on it. You were talking about stacking them. My daddy was a trucker when I was little. These were just coming into use. You look at the ships coming to the port, they stack those loaded 10 high on the deck of a ship. They're incredibly strong. The 20 foot is good for 220 miles an hour, loaded. And the 40 foot is, I'm out of time. And I think the concern was living in them stacked. I think that's what uh, okay. the concern Okay, a comment to what was said earlier. Uh, 
there are several federal agencies that regulate the paints, the materials, and everything. Most steel that's used in this country now originates out of China and a good part of the paint. So it doesn't matter if you're getting a container or somebody mentioned their phone or numerous other items. This is made in China. Maybe you want to get rid of it. I was actually concerned more on the engineering. Like if you put windows in those things, you, you hurt the Valid integrity. Valid concern. Of, you right. can disturb their integrity by punching holes in them depending on how big the... But one more point. The ones with wood floors, the floors are treated with toxins to prevent uh, infectious agents being transferred. Unless they're treated like painting, uh, they shouldn't be lived in. It's, it would be dangerous. And that's not because it's out of China. It's because of federal regulation requiring pest control. Okay. Commissioner but Pritchett has a quick... You do know this Republican group up here is trying to pass this through. <laughs> you do know this, this Republican group up here is trying to pass this through. It, that, it's that, that was just like my motherly fussing about China just because of all the baby milk that came over and we've had some instances. And again, that's personal. But if I see it's made in China, I typically don't buy it myself. But that's just personal. Well, and that's just you, you guys could to stick with Marlboro. Marlboro? That's made in this country. I haven't gotten to smoke since I was 13, so. The, the point <laughs> is, there are toxic and unethical products made in every country. I, I know, I know. But <laughs> that's just something I'm throwing out to you very motherly. It's probably not commissionary at all. And it's but Republican-wise, we're on it. you got to know who your enemies it. really are. And it's a preference on whether or not you buy from a communist country. You know, uh, there, are, uh, there are probably a few containers still made here, but not very many. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Tobias, did you want to speak now? Uh, did you want to speak to that other gentleman? I. No, I, I just, you know, neglected because I was focused in on two and, you know, went with three. But I, I, I'd like to make a motion that um, that we do not process new complaints for shipping containers because I know that we put a uh, moratorium. I don't know when that moratorium was going to end, uh, okay. consistent with the proposed ordinance and whether we come with option two or three or some combination that upon adoption of the code revision, um, we delegate to the special magistrate the authority to vacate any uh, order of finding a fact for existing cases involving shipping containers used for residential uh, storage facilities. Okay. okay. Motion by Commissioner Tobias. Second. Second by Commissioner Lober. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I've got one too. Okay, Commissioner Lover. Just a question for staff uh, on that same vein. Would it be helpful to have a second motion uh, authorizing a continued stay on enforcement for violations that are in process, or do you want to handle it on the back end? I just I want to make sure that you have every tool at your disposal. I, I believe that we have enough with the okay. with the motion, and we and then when we um, come once the board adopts a, a, an ordinance. Um, then we can reevaluate those those complaints and see where we where we stand and see what action needs to be taken. Okay, if you're happy, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank Do you, you have an idea of how many of those we have? Or uh, we we have um, found that there were seven active okay. or seven code enforcement cases since the um, since since we uh, developed the interpretation. Okay, hopefully we can clean those up. Yes. Great. All right. They're going to bring back um, an ordinance, okay. and it's probably going to be pretty broad as far as what we have, and then we're probably going to scale it back to make it less restrictive, if that makes sense. The restrictions that they're going to come back with aren't ridiculous. It's just that we probably will peel back a few of them that we don't want. It means you're probably going to come see me about six or seven more times. <laughs> yeah. But I think the commission <laughs> expressed the desire to allow them. So. I wouldn't do that yet. I mean, not, not without action of the board, just to be safe. Well, it's already cost me $1,500 because I had special magistrate. But there was, there was nothing in place that allowed you to have it in the first place, even though, what, I mean, you can agree or disagree on whether or not you should have been violated. It, you probably weren't allowed to have them to begin with. But it would have been nice that I wouldn't have had to have moved them because during the last, when you guys had the last hearing, I had a special magistrate appointment that week. And code enforcement never called me to tell me that it was canceled. So I could have easily gone to that special magistrate, missed work, because somebody couldn't call me. And they did have phone numbers to reach me. 
I didn't get that courtesy. I got the the nice uh, legal letter in the mail, but they couldn't contact me directly. I had to call them, and thank goodness I found out before the appointment. Because my time's valuable too. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could solve the problems of past, but all we can do is try to solve them moving forward, and we'll try to do right by you guys. And I'd love to converse with all of you, but it's probably not. Of course, yes. Do you, yes. Do you find code enforcement? Yeah, What's take, that? Take, do you find take code some enforcement? Teeth off court code enforcement? Yeah. Take <laughs> Right. We're willing to do anything as far as modifications, putting them in the ground, painting them, you know, to make it will come back aesthetically pleasing. I think we're going in the right direction. For yeah, you. and we, we can't dialogue like this only because I can't get it on the record, okay. and then I'm talking to myself on a recording, and no one knows who's talking, and so we got gotcha. you. Thank well, you. you have my name in, in the code enforcement. I'm one of those that, that would have been fine. Okay, we're going to move on to the next item. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. County Attorney. Um, wait, wait, I'm sorry, we skipped one. Gosh, we moved so much stuff around. Item I-3, I apologize. We have a lot of cards on these. Maybe let's go ahead and have public comment yeah, first. Probably, because you probably need to introduce. Do you want me to introduce your item? If it's okay, I can I can do a brief intro and then address it after public comment. Um, I mean, in in short, essentially the COC met. Uh, I sat in on their meeting, uh, addressed them during the meeting, gave them the opportunity to ask questions. Obviously, great. speaking uh, is one of five, not on behalf of all five. There. Initially, um, what we passed left a portion unallocated, and this is going back and allocating some of the funds that were um, up to this point unallocated. Uh, they just had not gotten any sort of a recommendation from the COC. Uh, I believe that just as we passed a portion of it before, if there's no controversy and there's no reason to delay it and there's nothing that, um, that's going to be gained from, from waiting on this, we should go ahead and pass that portion as well. Uh, this is allocating... Uh, the dollar values are all in there, but this is allocating a, a good-sized chunk of, of what remained unallocated. We will still have portions that are unallocated after this is done. I believe it's just shy of 47 million will remain unallocated. So we're uh, essentially allocating the difference between that and what was left unallocated, roughly 100 million before. Um, but essentially, that's the, the gist of it. I'm happy to, to speak more after public comment, but I think at this point, maybe we go to public comment. Well, I'm going to offer the commission the same courtesy we've been doing for every other item. Commissioner Pritchett? Yeah, I would agree with that. I was able to watch the meeting where you guys hashed it out, and I got to see Commissioner Lober there. And so I, I think the process that wor it works, you guys, was, it was brought back to you. You came up with some, some changes, even though they weren't the ones I wanted. At least it followed the majority of the board, which I appreciate it. So you came back with some new recommendations. And so I, I'm going to look to pass this tonight because I don't want to slow it down any more than we might have already. So I, I think the due diligence has been done, and I think the process has worked. And although it's not exactly what I would have liked, I, I think we have something moving forward. So I am going to vote in support of this. Okay. I thought I had a bunch of cards, but they were J3 as well with these. So uh, Ms. Barker, Courtney Barker, and after Courtney, MJ Waters. Thank you, Courtney Barker, City Manager for the City of Satellite Beach. Um, I just wanted to lend my support to the um, to the board and to, the, to su supporting this item. We're hoping to get this passed so we can, you know, kind of make sure the community knows that we're moving along and getting these these projects done. And I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate you coming to the meeting. That was great. And uh, before I leave, I just wanted to congratulate Commissioner Smith on his award from the Marine Resources Council. So thank you all very much. And uh, you know, every time I come to one of these meetings, I appreciate you more and more. This is a long night, and uh, so thank you all for, for everything you do. Appreciate it. Thank you. MJ Waters. And after MJ, Lewis Kotnick. I'm MJ Waters. I live in Melbourne, Florida. 
And I am here to echo Courtney's support for this. I think it was very wise of the people who created this ordinance to put in an annual review for flexibility to update the plan as needed. And I'm really pleased to see that the process worked, that the COC made their recommendations, brought it to this board. The board had some questions, concerns, sent it back. And then it came back with some adjustments made. And I think that shows that it's a good process. Um, and we have that uh, oversight committee involved, which I think really is important to the citizens of the community. Um, it's very important to keep this moving forward. We have invested time and money in permitting and processes to get these things going. And I think keeping those things moving is really critically important. Because every day, hundreds of people thousands of people sometimes are moving into this county. And so it's not just we have to solve the sins of the past, but we have to plan for the people who are coming in the future. Um, so it's, it's time to keep it on track, and I hope that you will vote in favor of this so we can keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Tremendous. Good evening. Hi. Lou Kotnick uh, here in Melbourne as well. And um, I echo what's been said before. I thank you for your action on it. I think it, the process is working. And uh, my real point is just to echo that um, I, I think it would, it, we want to have the continuous flow, right? I mean, we've got a 10 year plan. We know that there's more to get done even than that. Um, so please go ahead and adopt it uh, and let's move forward. Uh, we're gonna have many more years here together. Thanks an awful lot. Thank you. Bo Platt. And after Bo George Rosenfield, I think he may have left. Uh, in, in the interest of time, I'll just say I'll echo the. Name and address, uh, real fast. Oh, excuse me, Bo Platt, Melbourne, Florida, and I'll just echo the uh, comments made by Ms. Waters and Mr. Kotnick. Thank you. Thanks, Bo. George. Oh, there goes George. I thought you left. You usually sit up here. <laughs> I, I was going to leave. I had another another engagement at uh, seven o'clock when I decided was more, this would be more important. Well, thank you. My name is <laughs> my na my name is George Rosenfield. I live in Sun Tree. I am an environmental scientist with a master's degree from what became the New York State College of Environmental Science and Forestry. I can't even remember. I think that uh, in those days, environmental in those days, environmental science was not a science. Forestry was the environment. I specialized in forest management and photo measurement. Muck dredging and versus the sewage problem. Both are important. We need to remove the muck and stop depositing new muck. We need to solve the sewage problem. I don't believe it is an either or problem. If we, fix sew if we find sewage violators and use the fine money to go back and make improvements, that would save some of our tax money. Otherwise, maybe a 50-50 split, but that is not scientific, but is better than not doing anything. I know Ms. Barker's knowledge and group is doing fine in their resolution of the matter. The, the, the problem is not political, but scientific in where each is needed the most. Let her group have their reins and do continue what their plan, with their plan. Thank you. Thank you, George. All right, Commissioner Lober. Okay, I, I just want to say before I go into some questions, um, it, it's going to take me a couple of minutes here. Uh, and also to the speakers, to Ms. Barker and to Commissioner Pritchett, um, please don't assume that there's going to be a motion following this. I'm not up to anything. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm going to have a request at the end uh, for the COC as opposed to a motion directing that we do anything. Um, if I can have a, a little bit of liberty to address staff with it. Sure. May I? All right, let's start out with um, Virginia. Um, bucks on average 1% to 3% organic, is that right? Yes. And then is it not so that raw sewage is generally chock full of compounds which break down into ammonia which further break down into other nitrogenous molecules? Yes. Okay, last question for you. Uh, following Hurricane Irma, excluding the municipalities, Brevard County's wastewater system discharged approximately 22 million gallons of sewage of which we know. Is, is that your understanding as well? Yes. All right, now I believe we have Eddie somewhere. Is he trying to sneak out on me? Okay, good. Good man. <laughs> it looked like he was running, didn't it? 
Yeah, I, I was going to say he's smarter than I am if he was heading for the door. <laughs> All right, Eddie, I've got some questions for you, several questions pertaining to the Riverside Drive Force main. Uh, the current pipe that's in place is a 24-inch PVC pipe, is that right? Correct. And the current force mains experienced multiple breaks along its length, correct? Correct. Is it not so that these breaks have resulted in sewage spills that directly or indirectly impact the Indian River Lagoon? Correct. Now this force main, is, as I understand it, carries raw untreated sewage for treatment to the wastewater treatment facility, does it not? Correct. So as a direct result of this force main releasing raw untreated sewage into the lagoon, the Department of Environmental Protection has ordered Brevard County to make the necessary repairs and improvements to eliminate the potential of future discharges, is it not? It's part of the consent, yes. Okay. Now is it correct that we have no choice but to complete those repairs prior to December of 2020? Correct. Based upon that consent order? Yes, sir. So the pipe that's presently in there has been in there somewhere between roughly 10 and 15 years, is that right? Correct. And the pipe's lifespan should have been in the range, give or take five years of, of 30 years, is that right as well? That would have been my estimation, yes. Okay, in, in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. uh, is it your understanding that some portion or portions of this pipe is, uh, I'm sorry, that, that they are or may be defective? Um, I don't know defective. It's um, subject to breakage? It's subject to breakage. Now, is it your understanding that the fabricator of the pipe, the actual manufacturer, may have faced lawsuits over alleged defects with this particular variety of pipe? I know the county went through litigation years ago with regard to a portion of this pipe. I do not know if this portion of the pipe was under that same litigation. Okay, with, with respect to that, is it your understanding that potentially this manufacturing defect may well be largely responsible for the lifespan of this pipe having been reduced to a fraction of what was anticipated? I'd have to resort back to find out what was the discussion and findings through the litigation. With, without having, uh, it, I'm just looking for basically your, your best understanding at this point. If it's not perfect, that's fine. Is that, is that your understanding? I'm, I'm just trying to establish why we're getting 10 to 15 years out of something that should have lasted two to three times as long. That's been the story of what's been conveyed to me pr to present on. By, the, by staff? Or? By staff. Okay. Now, absent this particular variety of pipe, which may be defective, but we're not completely certain, we wouldn't ordinarily be replacing pipe 10 to 15 years after it had been initially installed, would we? No. So your, your plan to upgrade this system involves totally replacing, I'm sorry, totally removing the 24 inch existing PVC pipe and replacing it outright with a larger diameter pipe made of a more resilient material, is that right? Correct. So you're also going to, in addition to that, be installing pressure surge tanks at two existing lift stations along the main, is that right? Correct. So is it your understanding that the brand new larger diameter pipe made out of ductile iron along with the pressure tank should largely, if not completely, fix the issue of this particular stretch of pipe being subject to breakage and leaking untreated raw sewage into the lagoon and, and therefore polluting it? It'll greatly reduce the probability of an event occurring, yes. Now it's, it's fair as a result to say that these measures of reconstructing the force main and constructing pressure tanks will result in improvements to the force main? Yes, sir. Is the anticipated lifespan of this new ductile iron pipe more than five years? I don't need to know how much beyond, but is it more than five years? Yes. Now, how long generally does it take for the, the state to process a loan request? If, if you know. If you don't know, that's fine. Uh, it's quick because we've already been pre-approved. Okay. The project's been pre-approved, and now it's just a matter of the, um, the contract and the documentation being submitted. Okay, now I have a, a few questions for, for Eden, and I've got, I'll try to keep it as brief as I reasonably can. Is acceptance of the proposed SORL plan with a modification a permissible option for the BOCC under the SORL plan and the associated interlocal agreements? The ordinance provides for um, inclusion, inclusion and modification, or non-inclusion. So essentially, we, we can accept it and modify it. Not that that's what I'm proposing at this point, nor will it be what I'm proposing this evening. Modification is an option, depending on your definition of modification. So with, with greater specificity, following the COC's submission of a plan to the BOCC, does Ordinance 2016-15 specifically permit modification on the part of the BOCC? It does use that language, yes. 
Okay. As to the, DE, uh, the DEP, so the Department of Environmental Protection consent order, in lieu of paying a cash fine to the state, do we have the option instead of implementing an environmental enhancement, environmental restoration, or capital uh, slash facility improvement? I think that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, Eddie could confirm that. And then a, a question for John, and I, I promise I'll be wrapping up soon here. So when does hurricane season begin? It's May 1st, I believe. June 1st. June 1st, okay, so we're coming up. All right, I, I'm not making a motion at this point, but I, I do want to ask that the COC, when we come up, uh, come up to this um, workshop that's coming up, please have already some discussion with respect to this item. I'm going to approve, and I assume everyone else will, uh, the Riverside Drive item that was earlier in the agenda that um, hasn't yet been addressed, the, the consent item. But I, I would like you all to at least consider whether you end up approving it or not, uh, looking at including this as part of the Sorrel plan. I'm not going to go around your back and play games and, and try to do it right now, but I, I would like you all to look at it. I think this is extenuating in the sense that it's not routine maintenance by any means. Uh, and my plan isn't to do this to prevent the county from borrowing. It's to do this so that we can use the money we otherwise would borrow or to continue to borrow and then spend it to replace even more pipe. So I'm not looking at, at basically shifting the cost from one side to another. But again, if you don't recommend it, you don't recommend it. If you do recommend it, you do recommend it. Um, but I, I would like you all to at least consider that um, and, and have some discussion available at the board workshop that's coming up. So that's, that's all I've got. But otherwise, I would move to approve this as listed. I'm not asking that we do anything with respect at, at this point to the, the force main that I discussed. I just wanted to lay that out there and, and put it in the, uh, in the record so that the folks on the COC are, are well aware of, of what I'm asking them to do. Second for discussion. Okay, Commissioner Pritchett. I just wanted to mention, Commissioner Lover, we already approved that. Oh, did it, did it already get approved? Yeah. And the consent? Oh, did we already get through it? Yeah. We yeah. did consent. You weren't early. out here when we did we're doing oh, the consent. Oh, okay. We waited for a bit, but you were. Okay. All right, I stand corrected. Thank and you. We'll have to go through it with that, but that's the one thing that kind of gives me a little hesitation is when it's something that's on the enterprise fund that is something we probably should be doing anyways, which we are doing. But, I mean, I don't know if we can tax the whole county for bad decisions made in the unincorporated area. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit of my hesitation, just so you know, moving forward with the ideas with them. Because, okay, I live in the city of Titusville, and I pay that water bill. When they have blow-ups, I'm paying sure. extra into that. And we're, they're not getting Sorrel funds to fix it. Right. No, I, I understand. My, okay. And in, in terms of that, I'm not asking, I mean, it's, it could have been phrased as a motion tonight. I'm not doing that. I, right. I'd like to give them the opportunity to consider and address it. It would not be fair to them, in, in my estimation, to basically let them come to their public comment and then turn around and say, thanks, now that you don't have the opportunity to respond, let's go ahead and and accept it with this modification. Right. I'm just letting you know that baseline that right. I have, that's, that's, that's something I, I struggle with because I, I feel it's, it's almost an unfair tax when we do that. Do I think we should fix it? Absolutely. Right. My, Absolutely. You know, we need to do what we need to do. I actually saw some information coming around recently where the Brevard County fees for water are almost $10 a month less than all the other municipalities. So I, I think we need to fix that fee base. I know you've heard me go on with sure. this many no, I, times, but that's going to be something I, 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 I'm going to have to loudly vote no on if we, if we sure. move that from there. But I, do I think we need to fix it? Yes. Right. I'm, and I'm as far as new discussion. projects, yes. But I just I would tell you that ahead of time because it hit in that little vein right there that I have a real big heartburn problem over. You know, I'm, I'm, so. not, I'm not trying to, to push that this evening or necessarily even later. I just I think it, it would be a healthy discussion for us to have. And, you know, again, I, I just want to make clear I'm not suggesting that we use the $11 million out of Sorrel, even if that's what the COC recommends, and then say, gee, it's $11 million less that we have to borrow. I'd rather continue to, to spend the money we otherwise would have spent and just improve more of it so we have less gunk going into the lagoon. But again, I'm, I'm not pushing to do anything this evening. Commissioner Tobiah. Thank you. And I guess this would be for the county manager since he hasn't spoken at all today. Uh, looking at consent F3, uh, just for a point of clarification, we only authorized you to set an application for that loan. We did not authorize you to or uh, to go ahead with the loan. So. Um, should Commissioner Lober want to continue with this, what we approved on consent doesn't obligate us. Is that is that fair? Well, it's it it's, was permission for me to sign it, to so we would execute the application to submit for the loan. That's what that 
item was. Yes. We've submitted the application. That process has been done and that we've been selected. This motion is for to give the county manager the authority to sign all, all Sorry. To, to do the execution of the, uh, the loan agreement. So in other words, it, rat it ratifies that, correct? Okay. Ratifies the loan, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lover? Just briefly, do, if you know, is there any prepayment penalty? No, not with state. Can you pay it ahead of time? Right, right. without having to, to subject ourselves to pay some additional costs as a result thereof? No, there's no prepayment. There's no penalty with those. In, in addition, commissioners, it's, sure. it's, a, it's a reimbursement loan. So we spend the money, then we get f refunded, or not refunded, but we get the loan money, and then that's when the loan becomes more active. The, the, uh, <clears throat> so uh, if we decided not to uh, get the money for the, the loan because we were doing something different, then the loan would be reduced by that amount. Thank you. Okay. So we're not doing anything? No, I just okay. move, move to approve and it's been seconded. All right. Commissioner Tobia? Uh, since I, I, feel, I feel bad since we voted on consent, uh, you know why Commissioner Lober wasn't here? Um, I mean. I, I don't have a problem leaving it be. Okay, because I, I, yeah, I, I understand, I understand. I, I, I was just going to a motion to reconsider to see if, if I that. I think it's okay. Okay. Then okay. I appreciate the thought, though. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Okay, county attorney now. <laughs> We're requesting permission to advertise for an executive session for the case of Brevard County versus Cruz, which is the north end of the St. John's Heritage Parkway. For the 23rd at noon or um, right after the board meeting ends, whichever occurs first. Make a motion to have an executive session. Happily seconded. On the 23rd? Yes, ma'am. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett for an executive session on the 23rd, a second by Commissioner Lober. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Item J3, and I have cards for this as well. Ready? Go ahead. All right. Uh, item J3 is a citizen request to allow golf carts through the I-95 Vera Boulevard interchange. Uh, the Vera Boulevard overpass and interchange with I-95 is owned and managed by the Florida Department of Transportation as limited access right-of-way. As such, Brevard County is not authorized to permit the use of golf carts through the interchange, um, but the state does have, has established a criteria for the safe operation of golf, golf carts, <clears throat> which our code is based on. Uh, Brevard County Code Section 10672 provides the minimum requirements when considering whether a sidewalk can be approved for use by pedestrians, bicycles, and golf carts combined. Um, while the sidewalk meets the eight-foot width uh, requirement, minimum width, it does not meet the requirement to have a four foot wide minimum grass shoulder that would allow golf carts to be able to yield to the other vulnerable users of the sidewalk. Along the overpass, the sidewalk is physically restricted on both sides by a uh, barrier wall, uh, that, which doesn't allow the safe operation of two uh, golf carts side by side or passing each other. Um, approaching the overpass, the sidewalk includes a two-foot shoulder on each side, and then the slope can be as, as steep as one foot vertical to, um, for every three foot of horizontal distance uh, from that shoulder. So the citizen request suggests that a solution could be to allow one-way golf cart travel through the interchange. Um, while that suggestion does resolve the, uh, the physical constraint issue with the two golf carts um, attempting to pass one another, there are, there are still a number of safety and feasibility issues um, that are still present. So, in order for FDOT to consider the request, Brevard County will need to submit a proposal to uh, FDOT District 5 Traffic Operations. Um, we've included this information in the uh, staff report that's attached to this agenda item. 
which includes some exhibits showing the, uh, the one-way golf cart travel. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Do you want questions first, or can I? Let's, yeah, let's do it that way. Okay, I have public comment cards if everybody's still here. John Fantoli, and after John, Anna Maria T. We lost John. Uh, hi, hi, name uh, and address, please. Uh, Anna Maria Tea, uh, 945 Shaw Circle, Melbourne, Florida. Um, I'm a freshman at Vier High School, and I would like to thank you for allowing us to present our concerns and hopefully provide a solution. I understand that the final decision to the matter at hand is up to the Florida Department of Transportation, but our goal here today is to get you on our side. The golf cart usage in Vieira has boomed over the past few years, serving as an alternate transportation option for many people. I personally used our golf cart to get to and from school, to socialize with friends, and to get to and from the golf courses. Although a bus is available to me, I am involved in several ex extracurricular activities that require me to stay after school or arrive early to school. The golf cart was the solution to this problem, of which working parent would, will drive me. This is also a problem to many other students like me. Vieira is a master-planned golf cart-friendly community, but I guess that was only meant for West, West Vieira, leaving East Vieira out of the picture. Let me just remind you that without East Vieira, there would be no West Vieira. Furthermore, the waste of time and resources used to enforce the current golf cart ordinance is ridiculous. A friend of mine was pulled over for, for going 18 miles per hour on a 15 mile per hour sidewalk, showing that the police officer used the speed detector to measure how fast he was going on a sidewalk. After, interview, um, <clears throat> after interviewing my parents and other adults, asking if they would get pulled over for going three miles per hour on a, a, over a speed limit, all answered no. Currently, we have um, over 1,400 1, supporters on a petition that we have started. I would just like to state that we do not support underage golf cart driving and the driving of golf carts uh, exceeding the capacity that they are built for, and these should be enforced. I hope that this is all taken into consideration and that the one-way crossing over the 195 interchange is supported by the board. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good job. Linda Schick. Is Linda still here? Linda Schick? No, she's here. Okay. Tanya, is it Feck or Tech? Oh, hmm? oh it's. Yeah, Tam? my handwriting okay. isn't great, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good with things, too. Good evening. My name is Tanya Thea, 945 uh, Shore Circle in Melbourne, Florida. I would like to thank the board for the opportunity to speak today. My husband and I immigrated from Germany in 2002 to the springs of Sun Tree in Florida. We have seen our sleepy town grow to a big town. People always use golf carts in our community. They are part of it. Um, it definitely increased over the last several years, and we saw more people using golf carts. Golf carts traveled from East Vera to West Vera and vice versa since the bridge opened in 2007. Many residents travel to the fields to the rec center in West Vera, Church, the Avenues, Duane Golf Course, and Vera High School, just to name a few. Few. In all those years, I have never seen a golf cart pulled over by police until March of this year. If going over the bridge is a safety concern for the golf carts, does it mean that we should have the same safety concern for bicycles and pedestrians? A walker has to cross two crosswalks to go over the bridge, crossing the street that a vehicle has to enter and, and exit the interstate. State law gives pedestrians the right away. Will the police enforce vehicles to stop? We all know how dangerous this is, so why not banning the pedestrians and bicycles as well and build a separate overpass? 
Did the county and state overlook the progress of a changing community for which golf carts have been part of it? Why is our local and state government ignoring trends such as golf carts as a form of transportation and chooses a design, design taxpayer-funded infrastructure, infrastructure that is unsafe for a good amount of people? We know Commissioner Kurt Smith's staff is working hard on a plan to present a model to FDOT allowing one-way golf, uh, one golf cart travel through the I-95. I hope the board can see the desire of people traveling from east to west and vice versa using a golf cart. As you may know, a petition allow allowing golf carts crossing the intersection received <coughs> over 1,400 signature, signatures. We are all for safety for us and for our children. I do, we do not support underage golf cart driving. However, the legal age of driving a golf cart is 14 years old. I also do not want a golf cart cross over a 95 if it's unsafe. Communities change, especially smaller ones. Not to mention a benefit of new changes often improve a community. Having a golf cart allows for a community with less traffic and which creates a smaller footprint on the environment. Think about it. If you have 50 golf carts, you have 50 less cars on the road. Okay, your Thanks time for is your up. Time. Thank you. Bill Hobson, and after Bill, Barbara Gorin. Good evening. Cut that down from 12 minutes. I thought I had five, but I guess I only get three. Um, so I'm just going to try and summarize what I've uh, had to say. Uh, I moved here in 2005, been a, a resident uh, at 919 Delta Way uh, in Springs of Sun Tree. Uh, in 2007, when the bridge opened up, it really opened up uh, a new area for us because we, we all avoided the Wickham uh, roadway and the circle from hell. Um, it, it gave us access to church, schools, shopping, so much more. For 12 years, I've volunteered uh, and coached baseball. The golf cart gave me the ability to drag all that gear and my two kids to the fields three times a week and be able to get the gear up there without having to lug it out from the parking lot. It was a really good advantage. And on the way home from the games, the boys and I would communicate about what happened during the day. And it was, it was a, a nice event uh, and a good way to, to communicate with my boys. I never thought it was illegal to go over the bridge. Um, in 2008, when I got my first golf cart and started going over the bridge, I saw a sign on one end and a sign on the other end and nothing in between, you know, on the east and west side. So it said, you know, golf cart friendly, go, go, go. So I never thought that it was illegal to go over the overpass. It wasn't until 2016 that the, the county actually put in specific writing that you couldn't go over. And uh, that was in 16-22 was adopted. Uh, but from all my research, I find that all the commissioners are in favor of uh, more liberal golf cart use incorporated into the community. This is a golf cart community, whether the people like it or not, you know. Um, and so by cutting off the, th the throat at Vieira and at Wickham, there's no way to get to the other side. So I encourage you, I know, and I want to thank Kurt Smith and the staff for meeting with us uh, a couple of weeks ago to, to hear this issue. But uh, the, the, uh, the, ten, the 10 years that I've been going over that bridge, I've never experienced a problem with blocking somebody out, a pedestrian, a bicycle, anything. Um, if one, if you saw another golf cart coming, you'd back up and let, and, you know, give courtesy, let them get through, and then you would go through. Um, so it can happen. Cars and bicycles can get along, especially on the uh, intercoastal waterways where they got the bike lanes. Cars doing 55 and 55 plus, and uh, the go the bikes going way less than that. But they they seem to coexist just fine. I think the golf carts can can do so uh, as well. And uh, I think I'm out of time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Barbara. And after Barbara Gorn, Ray Ross. You look familiar. <laughs> Your
You're a trooper, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Barbara Gore in Vieira, Florida. Um, I think what I was going to speak to about the golf carts really doesn't pertain to what this issue is in Vieira, East and West. So I should probably... What did you have to say? I, I mean, was very concerned about the golf cart usage and just watching the kids on Wickham Road. It pertains. It. it pertains to the subject. Okay. Uh, this happened a couple years ago. I was at a stoplight on Wickham coming toward uh, Vieira, and uh, two young ones uh, in the cart were did not stop. They were on the sidewalk. They did not stop for the traffic light. They kept going across onto uh, where they should have waited for the traffic light like cars do. They um, continued on down the road or down the street <clears throat> and I watched them and I was really concerned because I could see an accident could happen so easily and I was scared to death for these kids. So I watched and watched and <clears throat> I got caught at another traffic light. They, uh, uh, I watched them go up past, uh, toward, um, past um, McDonald's. They went into uh, the chicken place, uh, Chick-fil-A. Chick so I followed because they had done a couple things that just terrified me. And I uh, parked in the parking lot, and I went in, and I asked them if they were the ones with the golf cart. I didn't threaten. I was. I just. Wa I went there as a grandmother, watching these kids, and I thought, "Do you all have driver's license?" No, they didn't. I don't know how old they were. They could have been 14 and 15. They could not have been that much older. And I said, well, I watched you, and you did not observe the traffic uh, light. And I was very concerned that another driver wouldn't see you, wouldn't, was not going to be aware of you. And then I watched you come down across the other two shopping uh, areas. And I, am, I just want to warn you that you really need to be careful because I don't want to hit you. I know other grandparents don't want to hit you. I just want you to be careful. So when they're not home and they're out on their own, they just really need to be extremely careful and we need to be extremely mindful of what they're doing. I had a little bit more, but Thank um, you. you know, they appreciated my talking to them. Oh, they, good. You know, they were we respectful? Ended, they were extremely respectful. Good. We got along well. I just they better have been or I would have come after them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just no, Thank you, Barbara. Ray Ross or Poss? I can't tell if it's a P or an R. I'm going to go with a P. Yeah. Okay. Was it Ross or Poss? Poss. Okay. All right. That's all the cards I have. Commissioner Lober? So this is, this is one of those items that I, I think we ought to give some deference to the, the commissioner in whose district it, it most directly pertains. Um, with that said, I, I'd like to approve it if we can do so in a safe way. Uh, I know that recently we had a, a TPO meeting in which Scott Ellis was a speaker and he was discussing one of the uh, fancy new DOT, not crosswalks, I forget the name for the type of beacon that they were using, but essentially the, the point and the relevance here is it, it doesn't really matter who has the right of way if you're dead at the end. I mean, you can be totally right and totally dead. Um, and I, I just, I, I'd like to support this, assuming our, your D4 commissioner is in support, and I, I believe based on what I've heard he is, uh, but I, I am concerned to a degree that we don't do anything that's going to give people a false sense of security, because the last thing I want to do is, is try to do the right thing and have a dead kid as a result. I, I used to live, before I lived in D2, in Vieira East off of Clubhouse, so behind Ralph Williams, directly east of that. Um, and I, I can tell you, I do remember from the time that I was there, there was a golf cart vehicle collision on Murrell in that stretch right between Barnes and Vieira. It was not pretty. Uh, I, I don't want to see that anywhere else. So 
you know, if there's some measures that can be put in place with whatever is um, put forward for approval, I, I would feel happier about it. But again, it's it's something in D4, so my intention is my intention is to defer to the the D4 commissioner on this one. Commissioner Pritchett. I can't wait to hear from the D4 commissioner, but um, I got a lot of hesitations with this. Brevard County is not authorized to permit the use of golf carts through the I-95V Arab Boulevard interchange as it's state owned and limited to access of right of way. So this really isn't even our road. And so I, 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 I'm not sure that we even have the ability. And, and let's say that we do, someone hears us doing it, and they go on there and get hurt. I, I think we're opening up a, uh, a situation. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not real comfortable with it, seeing kids up on golf carts on the top of an interstage. I have a lot of hesitation on that because I also am a grandmother and a mother. No, you're not that. I am. No. Might be having great-grandkids the next five years. So I, um, I, I got a lot of hesitation with this because I, I'm not real comfortable with it. So... Commissioner Smith. Well, as I'm sure you guys are aware, and and um, we we have looked at this in in great depth. I've spoken to um, our staff about it, and the most reasonable thing that we can come up with that may work is to create a one-way situation, so that golf carts traveling west would go across on the right side and golf carts traveling east would go one way on the uh, their right side. <clears throat> so I would like to ask staff to go forward with that and approach uh, FDOT with that idea and see if we can't no come up with some way to make that fly and get their input with that as well and see what happens. Uh, I'm with all of you. It's, it's a scary situation when you're having golf carts driven by 14-year-old kids that don't know the rules of the road and don't know stop signs from red lights. And hopefully their parents are teaching them before they allow them to use their golf carts. And, um, but we can, we can all imagine the horror that would occur if one of these kids or an adult was injured or far worse killed going across um, the Vieira Boulevard exchange when it was just a simple bridge going across going across safely was one thing then it's entirely different now because with the diverging diamond there's traffic coming in all directions and it's going to take quite a lot of talent and ability to navigate that. So if we can get FDOT to weigh in, I'm all for it. And so that's what I'm asking staff to do is to, to do that, get them involved and see if it's possible. And if it's not, it's not. Because it, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have a division between East and West. You're absolutely correct. But the hope is that if Spyglass overpass gets approved, um, if we can get started from the beginning and try and get inclusion so that we can be golf cart um, friendly, accessible, and dot all the I's and cross all the T's to make them safe and get FDOT's design approval, then that would be the next step. So that's in the future. But that's, that's where we have to look if we can't uh, get this passed. And I, I would think even if we can get this passed, we, we still need to work with the idea that Spyglass would be golf cart friendly and accessible. Commissioner Tavaya, were you done? Yes, I'm finished. Okay. Commissioner Tavaya. Thank you, and I think this would probably be to staff. Uh, I have no idea what the Florida Department of Transportation would say, but assuming they gave us an approval for a plan like this, who would cover if there were additional costs, structural costs, is that something, you know, I'm not, I'm not familiar with anything like this, a asking for additions on, on state highways. Would you ex expect that additional cost to be borne by uh, the state or the county? Uh, that would be definitely the county. Um, the state's going to require that we conduct an engineering study to submit to them that evaluates all the safety aspects of the golf cart use. It'll include a review of crash history in the area. Um, 
they're going to want, want to make sure we've considered all safety aspects. Um, as far as the cost of any, uh, of any bridge modifications, that's already been considered and it was determined when the Vieira interchange was under design that that was going to be too costly to modify or even consider replacing the bridge to accommodate the golf carts. Any, ad any additional costs will be to have to be fall on the county. Um, okay, so uh, follow up on both those. Thank you so sure. much. Uh, how, how, how much, if we were to go through forward with this and ask FDOT uh, for that ability, um, the engineering studies, I mean, how much staff time are we talking? Um, well, initially, I'm a, we're going to write a letter to uh, FDOT on behalf of the board and request uh, their initial um, approval or denial um, before we proceed with any engineering study. We, we would need to get a consultant to conduct the engineering study. But that only happens once we would get a conditional yes. reject, uh, if we don't yeah, get rejected. I don't think we would want to do that be until we get an idea of FDA t if they would even allow it. Okay. Uh, and that would then come back to the board, uh, you know, assuming we got the thumbs up from FDOT, that would come back to the board before we went through with that study, I assume? I believe so. Okay. And um, do you recall if we put in the request? Uh, for the modi modification of the bridge to allow for golf carts, that was cost prohibitive. What is, do you remember what cost prohibitive was in dollars? I don't know the amount, but there was some discussion during the uh, the Tens PD of thousands, PD &E hundreds phase. of thousands, I have mm -hmm. no idea. Commissioners, it would require modification of the bridge, widening of the bridge, uh, and that's uh, an extremely or exceptionally costly thing. It would be uh, and it would not be hundreds of thousands. It would have been in the million kind of category or above. So, let let me let me ask you. Uh, I, I would pose this question to the board before we move forward. I don't want to put anyone's hope, uh, but I mean, and 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 I don't mind asking uh, the Florida Department of Transportation what they thought. But if they gave us the conditional okay. And we knew, assuming we would get that, and we knew we were on the hook for potentially millions of dollars, um, is that an answer? Is that an answer we want then to 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 make that decision? I I, I don't think that that's fair to get any of these folks' hopes up if we do get a yes, and then we have to pay, or if we are to modify, it's our responsibility to do that. So I certainly would like you know. Uh, that's the commissioner not, in that that's district. not going to be part of the equation the the idea here is to get them to come up with some solution if possible with the existing bridge there's no no idea that that bridge is going to be modified there's no money to do that it's strictly regarding the bridge as it exists and if they can come up with a design that with the existing bridge to allow it and the only thing the only idea we came up with that's even possible is the one-way solution and if they don't deem that as a possibility, that's as far as it goes. So we would only be asking for a safety, not a right. not a Correct. financial commitment. Is, is that that's what the letter would clearly state? Is that we would specifically be requesting? Uh, we would present the idea of the one-way golf cart travel. Okay. Um, and showing our initial findings of that, and and, and see, ask them to respond. Would that need the, an engineering? Would that need an engineering study? No. Yes. Yeah, commissioners, we would we would make the initial request. They would make the the way their the the state has a process for this that they've prescribed, uh, and what it entails is the, an initial ask by us. They then respond with either a yes, you can move forward to an engineering study. In other words, they didn't say no, uh, but it's a conditional yes based on more findings that might that would come forward with a study or they could just say no if their assessment of it is that it's just not going to work then rather than putting you through the going through the whole study they'll just tell you no at the beginning and so if they say yes to a study then we do the study they'll give us some uh, parameters that they want to make sure that we consider as part of that study uh, and then we would you know get a proposal from a consultant to do that work and uh, the uh, uh, and, and then presumably, you know, if we went forward with the study, then eventually they would review the study and either make a decision yes or no after that. And it could very easily be no uh, at that stage. 
and uh, then you would go through a design process where they come up with the, you'd come up with an actual design if they said yes after the study and then they still have to issue a permit for that uh, for you to make any of those changes and so in this particular case what we're anticipating asking for is principally comprised of signage and uh, there's some peculiarities associated with the intersections the signalized intersections that we'd have to address with DOT and so our hope is that they would feel enthusiastic or confident enough to tell us yes that if we that they thought we would get a real yes at the end or they would just tell us no and we wouldn't have to go through the study unnecessarily so two quick follow-ups uh, study cost um, obviously they're gonna ask for parameters but can you tell me how much staff time or you said we would have to go get a consultant to do that and number two for the benefit of the folks that have spent so much time here what's the time frame uh, once the initial request for this actually to be permitted by FDOT you've done this before oh I, I'm not holding you to anything you know is this yeah. a year process is this a we, we actually have not done not. this before okay this well. is a, this is a new I've thing. never heard you say that before John yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> the uh, this is actually something we have never done uh, and I asked around to a couple other jurisdictions to find out if they had done it I don't know if Karina has, has found anybody that's done it uh, so the truth of the matter is right now I really don't know we're kind of in uncharted territory it's charted in the sense that DOT has a process what we don't know is how their staff is going to view it I will tell you that as I think you already know DOT tends to be very conservative so we'll you know I I don't want to say I don't have high hopes for it but it's going to be an argument uh, so to speak we, we will advocate for it but in the end they're going to have they've got the final word do you, and do you know that did you would the study cost be born internally or is that an outside consultant that we would need to hire for that we would need an outside consultant to do that I, I can tell you our I, I just speak for staff right now we are dozens of studies behind uh, in getting things done that are stacked up trying to do them internally and uh, this uh, to do something that's a whole new thing Got it. Uh, that's that this is not the type of study that we would want to be doing internally. Yep. final question that would come back to the board uh, for an RFP or something before we uh, authorized a, a study should we get back an affirmative from FDOT is that a fair assessment uh, we could certainly do that if if the board direction was to do that to come back we could develop the proposal based on what DOT said they wanted in the study get a, a proposal from a consultant and then we could bring it back to the board at that point we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get to it <laughs> <laughs> and finally and, and uh, I'm, this goes out to the uh, the audience members um, on Pinita Causeway has no business having a bike lane no business whatsoever it's not safe but there is a Senate president a former Senate president that made it happen so because you get the conditional okay to um, go forward with this and I will be voting in the affirmative my suggestion to you is contact your state representative and state senator as they have a heck of a lot more sway over the Florida Department of Transportation than any of us will and if there's a bike lane over the Pineda uh, a golf cart over that bridge is an easy easy ask good good advice yeah, we, well we probably not a good idea to call no. public comment back up because then we'd have to do that for everybody who asked and I'm just going to comment because it's gone around more than once I I don't feel comfortable with this and I'm sorry I mean I I know that your commissioner is working hard on your behalf I I've just seen too many wild drivers and maybe that's your teenagers maybe it would be mine if they had a golf cart but I don't I don't I'm not comfortable with the idea of us even asking for this because I don't believe it's the safe option I mean we just airlifted an 11 year old and I know that just happened and it's not good PR for the golf cart community and it's probably a lot less than what it could be but that driver was with his parents so he probably wasn't driving we're not talking back and forth I you've, you've had a chance to talk I, I I think that there are golf cart communities and there are certain areas that are safe for golf carts or that should be but we get the same request from Beachside too and we have the highest pedestrian kill rate 
you know, around. I mean, I, it's not something I want to brag about. I am not comfortable with this at all. Golf carts are golf carts. Golf carts are made for the golf course. And it's no different than grabbing it, jumping into a go-kart and jumping in there and saying, I'm safe, because who's regulating those golf carts? And, and I'm a little uncomfortable with, I mean, I've almost been hit by a golf cart at Chick-fil-A, of all places, and we were just talking about Chick-fil-A. I mean, that was one of those places, and I, I was on my way to a meeting. <laughs> that would have been pretty awful, but the kid was apologetic, respectful, and otherwise, but he had a whole pile of, of, of his friends on with him, and they weren't paying attention. And I'm not saying I'm worried about my safety. I should be paying attention to where I'm walking. What I'm saying is, is this is a, safety is a lot more important than, than a high schooler's opportunity to drive a golf cart to Vieira High School, in my opinion. Because I have to drive my 15-year-old to school, and because I don't even want her on a scooter on DeGroote, because I, I worry about her safety. And this option here, as far as the one-way traffic, would it be a solution if there was a bridge? Possibly, but then we're asking the opposite traffic to drive on the sidewalk. I don't know that that's a very responsible counter option for the, the tra traffic traveling the other way. So I'm not going to support this because I, I think the risk is too great. I don't think, um, you know, I think that there's pockets of areas that you could justify driving golf carts around and, and to do it safely. But, you know, even if we asked FDOT and even if you knew a senator, you could call. Commissioner Tobias to make that happen. It doesn't mean that it's always the best solution. Look at look at the Vieira Circle. Tell me how that that is a safe option. No one knows how to drive it. I mean that's the reality of it. It should never have been two two lanes to begin with. So it's sometimes government doesn't always make the best decision. But I'm not going to take a chance with with kid safety. I just won't do it. Okay, everybody got. Everybody got awfully quiet. So. Right. Time for the next next issue. You got to make a motion, make a motion oh, to move okay. forward. Okay, I'm going to make a motion then that uh, we request staff to approach FDOT uh, with our idea of a one way on each side and seek their input. Second that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Tavaya. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. So motion passes 3-2 with Commissioners Isnardi, myself, and Commissioner Pritchett in the negative. And so, that, again, this item will come back to us before we expend any money. Great. Thanks. All right. Okay. Okay. Item miscellaneous number four. Is this yours, Commissioner Tobias? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, last year, the board voted 5 0 to harmonize county contracting requirements with those of state requirements. This resolution is even more simple than what we did with e Verify. Rather than requiring terms be included in a contract, this just says certain items will not be included. All this resolution does is take the requirements that we already have to follow for projects that use more than 50 percent of state funding and, and applies it to our projects. These requirements simply ensure that we do not tamper with a free market such as mandating in our contract that employees pay a predetermined wage rate. Thankfully, the county does not engage in these uncompetitive practices, so this would have no immediate impact on us. So then why is this necessary? Other jurisdictions have gone this route and upended the construction market. An example would be Miami Beach that attempted to go even further than what statute allowed and prescribe a wage rate of $15 an hour, which has been struck down by the courts, not once, not twice, but in fact three times. Uh, of course, litigation is not free, especially when you lose, and that leads to increased fees and costs. Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and Palm Beach County have all taken steps to go back, to go down the path of single-source labor for particular union workforces. Um, in conclusion, Brevard County thus far has taken the conservative path of not meddling with a free market. This resolution would ensure that we stick to this path and harmonize our requirements between county-funded projects with those that are state-funded projects. So uh, I'd like to make a, a motion for uh, approval of this resolution pending discussion. Second. Uh -huh. 
Commissioner Pritchett? I was just going to second it. Oh. Ooh, beach to it. You did. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We'll probably do another card on the next one. I got a couple. I, I have three cards on this item. Did you want to introduce it first, Commissioner Tobias, before calling up public comment? Sure. Sorry. Apologies. First of all, I want to apologize. I'm doing something that I probably give people a hard time, and that's for changing things on the fly. However, I think these changes are not too substantive in nature. Um, Russie Roberts, a representative of Brightline, took issue with something in this resolution regarding the number of derailments that have taken place. Um, while he agreed the number of derailments uh, specified in the resolution was likely accurate, he asserted his company's position that many derailments are mere technicalities. I will accept this position and amend the resolution to remove that particular reference. You'll see that's struck down there. While we can quibble with the definition of a derailment, I think we can all agree that death is not a technicality. So I've included more details of said deaths in this resolution. This resolution is necessary to prevent tragedies like that of Linda Short. Linda Short was a 73-year-old visitor, visitor to Broward County who was hit and killed by a Brightline train. Ms. Short was a mother of two, a grandparent of five, when she tragically passed away. In another case, Jeffrey King, um, his mother still cries every time she hears a train go by. In the article, Treasure Coast News, on January 26, 2018, Brightline was quoted as saying, safety is Brightline's highest priority. All this resolution does is reiterate this stance. This is critical as the deaths of the Florida East Coast Railroad, including Brightline Rail, shows that Florida's rail are objectively and disproportionately unsafe. In 2017 alone, FEC had 16 fatalities on merely 351 miles of track. In contrast, Indiana, Ohio, which has 548 miles of track, has yet to have a single fatality. According to the Miami News, Florida is the second deadliest state next to California. In the last two, uh, in the last two Brightline deaths, according to a November 2018 Sun Sentinel article, the tragedies were directly related to the speed of the train. Some other deaths can be explained away as suicide, but this is misleading. Other railroads have specifically taken steps to prevent suicides on their railroads by, uh, by putting up uh, items such as quad grates. Instead of going down this path, Brightline has fought lawsuits that demanded these type of improvements. So that's the, ra the rationale for the train. Uh, resolution 19, a resolution of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard, Florida, in support of Florida Senator Debbie Mayfield's effort to ensure the safety of all passenger rail systems in Florida by encouraging the governor and the Florida Department of Transportation to fulfill the recommendations with the Office of Public Policy and Government Accountability regarding passenger rail. I'll skip over the uh, whereas, and as, as I think I've outlined most of uh, unfortunate tragedies have, that have taken place. Um, but uh, so now, uh, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County that the Brevard County Board of County Commissioners uh, fully support again Florida Senator Debbie Mayfield's request the Florida Department of Transportation immediately accept the findings of the OPAGA study and develop regulations governing high-speed uh, passenger rails. The Brevard County Board of County Commissioners encourages Governor DeSantis to address the high number of deaths on all forms of rail systems in Florida and direct the Florida Department of Transportation to plan uh, to make plans for reducing these numbers, death, accidents, and derailments. At, never mind, I probably should strike that derailments. Uh, as, as Florida rail system is one of the most dangerous in the country, and three, the Florida uh, County, uh, the, the Brevard County Board of County Commissioner encourages Governor DeSantis to direct Florida Department of Transportation to consider an alternative route for high-speed trail 
uh, passenger rail where reducing population density and much fewer at grade crossings will save the lives, the likelihood of tax dollars of all Florida residents. Um, and as a side, I would like to thank uh, Senator uh, Debbie Mayfield for her continued work to look out for the safety of um, all residents of Brevard County um, and uh, as she continues to push for uh, safer transportation uh, systems. That is the resolution, Madam Chair. Commissioner Lober. I just have a, a few comments and questions with respect to the items that were just now changed uh, as identified in kind of an orangey red color on the, the handouts. Uh, one is addressing Ms. Short uh, in my brief, very, very brief research. Um, I noticed that at least the news story that I was able to come up with here indicates that that individual turned onto the tracks uh, and was hit by a train. And then with respect to the other individual, it appears that they had their car physically on the tracks, not that anything was done incorrectly by the, the train or by the utility. Um, I think it was mentioned earlier this evening that one way to stop drunks would be to prohibit driving at night. Again, anytime you have any form of, of mass transportation, you're going to have fatalities. It doesn't make it okay, it doesn't make it nice, uh, but we could stop all road fatalities if we stopped all road traffic. It just doesn't make it a reasonable thing to do. Uh, if there were more evidence with respect to failings on the part of the utility or on part of the, the operator, I could see putting this restriction in place, but from what I can tell, um, and my understanding with respect to Brevard County is we have essentially sealed crossings, or we will have, I'm sorry, sealed crossings once all of the construction is complete such that instead of having two arms that someone can do an S turn around, we'll have four arms that drop down prohibiting someone from getting onto the tracks after they've lowered. Uh, I believe that may have been a request from Mr. Denninghoff. I don't know if that's, is that correct, Mr. Denninghoff? We've essentially asked for that. Uh, we've not seen plans that indicate that at this point. Is there not, my understanding as well as there's a, a commitment to spend, I believe, half a million over and above what otherwise is being done to ensure that that's put in place. Is that not accurate? I'm not confident about that. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll defer to, to Mr. Roberts later on. Um, but again, it, it, it comes down to a question of have they done something wrong, and if so, what measures are being taken here, if any, to prevent that from happening here? Uh, and again, if you want to address it, you know, by all means, but that's just my understanding of a very, very brief amount of, of uh, time researching the issue. Yeah, I appreciate it. However, and, and I'll mention this again. Um, in Florida, we have 351 miles of track. There have been 16 fatalities. In Indiana, Ohio, there are 548 miles of track. There have been zero fatalities. That is statistically significant. So uh, whether it's the, you know, there's probably many factors that go into it. However, when you have, you can't even mathematically figure that out. One's a zero. So I mean, it, I could say by a factor of, uh, it would be more than 16 because obviously they have more track. But either way, it's an infinitesimal uh, um, um, analogy as, as, as one has, again, more tracks, zero deaths, we have less tracks, and 16 fatalities. So whether someone accidentally made a turn, that may account for one. Um, a suicide may account for one, but again, 16 to zero, I think there are many other factors that go into this. Safety certainly is very important, as is supporting, um, I believe, uh, Senator Mayfield's push to make this uh, safe, and I think that's probably the impetus probably behind as uh, uh, Virgin Rail, as they've quoted, that safety is, is, is very important. That's all, that's all this resolution does. You go ahead. With respect to that, I have no problem passing a resolution that says that we, we encourage uh, best operating practices in, in order to further safety, but this goes a step beyond that. And in terms of, of Ms. Short, the only reason I brought her up as an example is because this was, was something that was added, uh, that was just brought to my attention in your resolution or your proposed resolution here. Uh, I understand where you're coming from with respect to, was it Ohio was the other state you mentioned? Uh, Indiana. No Indiana. Uh, but again, I, I don't know that we can say that, that the correlation indicates there's some causation element there. And whether it's, it's 16 or 20 or 15, Anything over zero is, is horribly unfortunate, but I, I just don't see that 
being tied into being the operator's fault solely on the basis of how many incidents have occurred. If there's something to show that they've done something incorrect, by all means, I'd be much more receptive to, to being uh, less than welcoming to them. But I just haven't seen that to this point. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I certainly I don't own stock in the company by any means. I don't plan on buying stock. I don't even know that it's publicly traded. Um, but however that may be. So would, would, Madam Chair, with your indulgence? Go ahead. W would you be okay? Uh, what happens if I struck through the addition? So we, uh, would you feel more comfortable if we got rid of the two deaths of the, and, and that was probably wrong of me, uh, in all honesty, to put only two of them down. I probably should have listed them all, um, but so I, I shouldn't have singled any out. So if I was to take away the two whereas clauses where, again, we got rid of the tragic loss of a 73-year-old uh, who had two children um, and five grandchildren, and we got rid of the other one um, who, uh, whose mother, every time she hears a train, um, she cries. If we got rid of those two whereas clauses, would you feel more comfortable supporting it? Would I feel more comfortable or, or would, would I feel, you comfortable? feel comfortable supporting it? Uh, it depends on what we hear in public comment. What okay. I can say, though, is, is with respect to their inclusion, again, it's not that I'm unempathetic toward what happened to those folks. I just think that the manner in which it's included suggests that that's somehow attributable to the train operator when I don't know that that's the case. So, you know, there are horribly tragic things that take place, but it doesn't mean that the that DOT, for instance, is, is, is responsible for that if it's something that occurs on a highway. Um, I would feel better about it, but I don't want you to weaken your resolution if it's something that I end up not supporting in the end anyway. And quite frankly, I don't know whether I'm going to support it until I hear public comment on this. This is one where I've not made my mind up at this point. So uh, my suggestion is to hold off on weakening it, because if I'm not going to support it anyway, you might as well pass it with the strongest language possible. Got it. Mr. Roberts, and I didn't see Susan here. Did she? And after Rusty, we have Adrienne. Is that you? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the commission. I appreciate this very much. Uh, sorry for the late hour, so I'll try and uh, truncate, truncate my remarks. Can you but give us your name and address, please? Sorry, yes. Uh, Rusty Roberts, Virgin Trains USA, 10705 Jeff Fuqua Boulevard, Orlando. That's our office address. Um, I want to start off by saying that first I agree with uh, Commissioner Tobia that um, that safety uh, should be a first priority and I can assure uh, him and this commission that safety is mission one for the uh, Bright Line Virgin Trains project. We just officially changed our name last week so we're still getting used to the new tongue twister. Uh, and I just want to say that as we develop the project, um, we were closely with both the Federal Railroad Administration and Florida DOT to design the highway crossings to the highest standards of safety that are required by the Federal Railroad Administration. The FDOT and FRA worked hand in hand with us, working with representatives from every county and every municipality, including Mr. Denninghoff when we were here in Brevard County on a uh, uh, crossing by crossing diagnost diagnostic uh, review to to determine what is the best safety measures to put at each at each crossing, uh, and by that I mean we had uh, standards that were set by Federal Railroad Administration, which FDOT required us to adhere to, uh, which they have authority to do so, uh, and then uh, we we uh, worked with the local public works directors and city and county engineers uh, in the comment area to figure out what more we we could do. So we would not object to any resolution that talks about safety and urges this company to operate in the high, with the highest safety standards. Um, we would also want the, a resolution to applaud a, this company for doing an innovative thing, bringing a public benefit to the state in terms of public transportation. Uh, the resolution emits many positive recommendation, recommendations from the APAGA report. And by that, I mean the resolution was very one-sided. Uh, it, it ignores areas of community partnership, suicide prevention, great enforcement of traffic laws, funding of state-of-the-art safety equipment, and it incorrectly asserts, most glaringly, that Brevard County residents through their tax dollars will pay for reconstruction of grade crossings. No government entity has received a bill from us for any grade crossing reconstruction, and Brevard County will receive no bills from us for any crossing upgrades, and in fact, 
this company agreed to pay for the maintenance of these crossings for the next uh, eight years. Um, the resolution calls for the governor to find an alternative route. This project is on largely private railroad property that exists today. If it were possible to move out of the uh, urban area of Brevard County, it would greatly increase our cross costs, make the project infeasible, uh, and uh, uh, you know that ship has sailed. We are starting construction in the next 45 days on this project, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are funding is in place. Uh, and we are ready to move forward uh, with this project. So I appreciate the good intentions of the sponsor, but we would ask that you defer action and allow us the opportunity to work with you to build a resolution that is forward-looking, that expresses our shared desire for safety, but also will allow this county to be served with a train station, which we're already in the pre-development phase. Okay. Do you have a question for him? Just very briefly. Um, with respect to the, the actual text of what was proposed, are there any other areas that you believe are factually inaccurate or, or very misleading to the extent that they might as well be factually inaccurate? Well, certainly the, what I mentioned about the, uh, the grade crossing is we've stated a, a countless times that we're not billing anybody for the work. No taxpayer is having any costs uh, uh, cited um, uh, you know, from us for, for the crossings. Um, you know, with regard to the derailment issue, look, I, that whole section was about the freight company, and it's an entirely different company. Uh, the derailment that he talked about, it, we've had the, that freight company has had one in 10 years. The others are what they call um, rail yard incidents, which are always very, very minor. What does that the, mean? Well, uh, Rail cars are towed through rail yards, okay. being pushed and pulled, and sometimes a wheel will ride up because there's switches everywhere while they move tracks around. It rides up a track, off the track a little bit. That's okay. a derailment. It doesn't tip over. There's no danger. It's just they put it back down. Uh, look, what the, also the resolution fails to mention is the fact that suicide is a major problem in, in, uh, in suicide by train. And I think that uh, when you talk about 16 deaths here, uh, we've had 80% of the incidents on our railroad, the fatalities, have been by suicide. We've had one or two, I believe two, you mentioned one, where somebody was in a car and, and struck because they were uh, on the tracks, either turned accidentally onto the track instead of the road, or got caught on the track. With regard to quad gates, uh, Thank you. We, are, we are installing quad gates. Um, by the way, Mr. Denninghoff will be receiving an, a new set of plans by the end of April, because I know he's expecting them. We've had meetings with him uh, addressing his comments. Everywhere that this train is going exceeding 79 miles per hour, there will be quad gates. In certain areas where we're not exceeding 79 miles, we will also have quad gates. And that's in particularly, essentially, uh, areas that are, we have to be careful, like downtown Melbourne, for instance, going through Melbourne and, and those kinds of areas. Uh, so uh, I, w my overall point is that we're not afraid to talk about safety, but we think we think we need to be truthful about it. That it was mentioned early on another item that that this is the highest state for pedestrian deaths. Uh, so when you talk about Indiana, Ohio, you're talking about a very rural area, and you're talking about a freight company, not about a, tr a passenger train. Uh, when you talk about pedestrian deaths, last year Brevard County had 22 in one county, and 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 we are operating in three counties. Uh, and so when you want to talk about statistics, I think you need to put things in perspective. Uh, we are, have taken a lot of lessons learned from our operation in South Florida, and we're actually adding additional safety measures in South Florida to find a way to reduce those kinds of deaths. That OPAGA report stated that most of the deaths, suicide in other areas, are, quote, outside of the railroad's control. Um, and it's because of human error or trespassing or suicide. Uh, there's been zero deaths zero incidents where it have been caused by a malfunction of our gate system, signaling system, or the trains. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Anybody else? No. Adrienne Kronbaugh? The 
Senate, they have limits on meetings. You guys are troopers here. Um, <laughs> my name's Adrienne Cronobaugh. I'm with Senator Debbie Mayfield's office. We're at 900 East Strawbridge Avenue in Melbourne. And uh, she couldn't be here this evening. She is in Tallahassee for legislative session and working on this very issue. Um, she wanted to thank you for uh, reviewing the Florida Passenger Rail System study that was conducted by the Office of public policy and government account accountability that was released this past fall. Um, and she's still working to get FDOT to address gaps in federal and state regulations governing this higher speed rail. Again, this is higher speed. This isn't what we've experienced in this area before. Um, and she really wants to thank you all for your support and commitment to the safety of our residents and visitors. And again, that study, um, if you haven't seen it, it was a little long. It does, what we really are focused on is getting FDOT to address those gaps in federal and state regulations regarding higher speed rail. Is there any questions? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys. All right. All right. Do we need to modify that? It, maybe I'll ask staff, verify. Are, are they paying for the upgrades and the maintenance for eight years? That's my recollection. After eight years, then the maintenance uh, expenses would return to the typical, which is that we pay for it. OK. So. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I from another government office. That's where I received yeah, that one. So, um, and I'd be more than willing to. Um, yeah, I mean, I I'll just, be more than willing to. So I'll, t I'll tell you. And what, I'm happy what, to support this 100. percent But I just want to be sure it's absolutely, accurate. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so let let let's get rid of the two, whether Commissioner Lober supports it or not. Let's get rid of the two whereas uh, the sorry the three whereas is the the orange whereas is. Also, let's get rid of the, whereas the residents of Brevard County. So I'd make a uh, motion to approve the resolution with those three deletions, or those four deletions. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Tobia. Do I have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Pritchett? I was going to just ask for a couple more changes. Sure. Oh. Um, because it's just real lengthy again. <laughs> But, um, okay, so I like paragraph one, two, and paragraph three's um, okay, two. Um, I think paragraph four and five also is, is, is good. Maybe we could, um, oh, six is okay. I think seven maybe could get um, next a little bit. One thing is, it's talking about freight, and this isn't freight. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and I, you know, just, just give it. So the whereas the CPM, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't. Yes, have a sir. Number. You're whereas very. The, the very rail. last. Yeah, the very last paragraph. Okay, so we talk about what, that's the one that that reads. Let me get this straight. 536 accidents, correct? Yeah, and, and I. And 143 total fatalities. And all that of one. that's there. I get it, but we're trying to support okay. something. No, it's fine. It's fine. I, I just okay. want to make sure I have the right one. Okay. And then on page two, I think then we could probably just drop right to there for now, be it resolved, and we're going to go ahead and support Senator Debbie Mayfield's coming down with the number one, number two, and number three are probably fine too. Okay, I'm sorry. So are, are, let's just go by um, the one where we talk about all aboard Florida has experienced 17 deaths in only 20 months. Did you want to get rid of? Well, uh, not that you so much, but this. But see, you got factual things here of just what's going on, and and then it's. I know it's all about Florida, but it's not just all about all about Florida. It's about high speed rail. Well, so yeah. And if we just start supporting Debbie Mayfield's I after that, which she's covering a lot of it. But yeah, and I, I understand. But all aboard Florida. Um, is now Virgin, so I mean it's like a name change, sort of like when Marlboro got in trouble and changed their name to Altria, <laughs> you know. Okay. 
So, so, so you, you, you'd feel more comfortable if we got rid of the fact that All Aboard Florida has experienced 17 deaths? I just don't think it has to go in this resolution okay, to move forward. Okay, that's fine. I think it's probably on the record. Um, and then you want to no, get rid No, sir, don't ever put in my mouth that I'm not comfortable with there being 17 deaths. That's not what I said. I'm, I'm not insinuating. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I you said it's on the record, so. I, yeah, I didn't put it on the record. This is fact yeah, factual. So we'll get rid of everything else down, the, down there. I think you can shorten the resolution, make it still do what you want to do by doing paragraphs one through six on the front and then dropping down where you are supporting Debbie, Debbie Mayfield's um, agenda at the yeah, but which level. One, let me just, so it starts as, whereas Debbie Mayfield has been resolute in protecting the health, safety, and welfare. Can I we think where it says, you could, but you could just drop down to what they all there for be resolved that we're supporting her, Senator Debbie Mayfield's resolution coming down. Okay. Can, can I have just a minute to, to reread this with the, the yeah. changes? Yeah. Thanks. I, I'm in support of maximizing safety for our citizens. I really am. And, and we're going to have to make some changes and adjustments. I love what Ms. Mayfield's doing up there. I was really concerned to find out that there wasn't. Let me get this. You said this last time you were here, ma'am, and it got my attention that there isn't a mandate on oversight of passenger rail at all right now. And that, that concerns me greatly. And so I, I love that it's in here in number five. So I, I appreciate okay. so much that we're working on this right now. So, so just for clarity's sake, um, Commissioner Pritchett, we're leaving the first six paragraphs. If you, if you agree no, 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 to that, I just, Yeah, I'd like your buy-in here. Okay. Then we're getting rid of everything up to the um, whereas the Brevard County uh, Commission wishes to express its full support and Center for Mail for its hard work running unsafe conditions in the county. And uh, th so it's just that one block, that huge block that's gotten removed. Yeah, and I, I think okay. you've got that's, it all covered. That's an easy deletion. Oh. So uh, I would change my um, motion to accept the resolution with those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine whereas is. Is that correct? Is that the number you counted? I just yes, want to sir. make sure. Thank you, sir. You're amazing. Thank you for working with me. <laughs> It's okay. He's so kind. Commissioner Wilbur. <laughs> I, I'm trying to find a way to, to get on board with you all. Forgive the pun. Um, would you consider... Don't be a virgin. Okay. I'll yeah, try. Okay. Uh, would you consider striking the third, which appears to be the last item following now, therefore, be it resolved? No. Okay. Doesn't hurt to ask. Wait a just encourage it. All right, so I guess I'll modify my second. I would have liked to have seen less stricken, but I'll you're modify. No you're no longer, you're modifying your second, so you're still. To, I'm, I'm, I'm modifying my second to sec, still second your motion, okay, got if that it. makes sense. Thank you. All right, no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion passes 4-1. Second time that's ever happened. Yeah, we do have an interesting board, I have to say. Okay. Hey, thanks. Sorry, you had to sit through this. All right, item K, public comment. Mr. Burns. Of course, you, you know you have the right to say whatever you want, but I would just encourage you to try to keep it. Oh, yeah. I'm not addressing uh, Commissioner Lober. I'm going, I forgot to fill out a card for the... Um, for the train? For the Debbie Mayfield thing? No, for the um, golf carts. You could speak on that if you want. Yeah, I was just going to say... Um, sorry. I'm Name and Robert, address. I know it's tired. It's late. <laughs> Robert Burns uh, here, Vieira. And I drive that bridge every day. I live with golf carts um, in my neighborhood picking my kids up from Manatee, 
my daughter's almost been hit by a golf cart. I've been almost hit by a golf cart. I understand um, they become something that we live with up here in Vieira. Um, but my first and foremost concern is always safety. And no matter how responsible or good that a 14-year-old kid may be driving that cart, that cart's not designed for an irresponsible adult who's driving a vehicle that hits it. And that almost 100% of the time, that's going to be a fatality of children. And more, more often than not, those kids aren't driving by themselves. Like you said, there's a gang of them you know, on there. There's no seat belts most of the time. And I, I don't think it's a risk uh, to risk the lives of, of those children for the convenience. And I understand the frustration, uh, but I'd be much more frustrated with losing you know, a life of a kid because of a, not because of their irresponsibility, but because of a driver who has airbags and seat belts. That's all. Thank you. All right. Board of Ports, Mr. Vate. I do have one item, uh, and that relates to a report that the board received from our solid waste uh, management department on uh, US 192, the future landfill site project. We gave you a, uh, a rather detailed history report, nine pages, talking about the current status of that in light of the fact that the that we did receive staff received a a draft uh, permit from the Army Corps of Engineers relative to that site on March the 15th. Uh, prior to that, back on um, uh, February 21st, staff had met with the City of Melbourne because, um, as you know from a prior report that we sent you um, a few weeks ago about the Sarno landfill site and uh, its current status, um, there we need to be seeking a variance with the city for um, additional height uh, variance for uh, for the for the landfill site at Sarno. Um, they, staff did receive a uh, an application uh, from our engineers, outside engineering consultant, for that particular variance. That uh, we received that on April second, and um, staff is preparing to submit the application to uh, the City of Melbourne and we anticipate that they will consider that um, during May um, and hopefully we will get that variance so that will give us some uh, uh, very much needed uh, extended uh, life at the um, Sarno facility. However, the purpose uh, for me raising this issue with you now is because um, the Army Corps draft permit is one that um, we had 30 days to provide comments so we want to make sure we got this information uh, to the board so you were aware of it after that then it, um, we cannot we can no longer make any additional comments um, in case we had any questions about it or concerns uh, in fact staff and the our outside consultants have looked at that draft permit they do not anticipate, unless we get different direction from the board, making any uh, comments. And at that point, it's a matter of um, executing the permit. And uh, we, we have not done that. Um, we wanted to make sure that we got all this information to the board. And my purpose this evening is to see, in light of that information, whether or not there was a interest uh, from the board in either us uh, uh, agenda, uh, putting an agenda together for this item or having a workshop on this item or if the board wanted to give us any other direction before proceeding. Otherwise, staff is ready to proceed, but we wanted to make sure that we got all this information uh, to the board before moving uh, any further. Okay, seeing as there's no lights on and this is my district, um, I spoke with, I'll just tell the commission, I spoke with the county manager and obviously this is an issue that's very near and dear and I feel very passionate about. Um, there is no harm nor is there any um, urgency to get the per to sign the permit and uh, the county manager has, has agreed that waiting until after our June break to come back for an agendized item before we move forward because there are 
several options that we can look at that don't involve us trucking the trash out to Osceola, nor do they involve us doing anything major or, or a couple of months isn't going to make a big difference. And I want some more time because we haven't done the environmental study on the other possible piece of land that's available. We have 68 acres, some of which is being used by St. John, some of its retention, but that's all zoned landfill. That's a possibility. So there's a lot of options out there that aren't just let's start a new landfill at 192. So I want this commission to be very careful before moving forward, before signing that permit and rezoning that land, just so we can say it's more valuable. Or, you know, I, I think it's a very dangerous prospect. And, you know, I, I may not have the votes. I, I may end up with the votes. I'm not sure. But I'm going to fight it right to the bitter end. And I think at least we, we always defer to the commissioner of the district. We always defer. And I can go back and look at the minutes. And every commissioner up here does it. And this is such a big deal to me in my district. And such a, it should be a big deal to everybody, considering that this will be the first thing that you see when you drive down 192. And you may not see it in the beginning. But we all know how high that, that, heap, that heap becomes. And I don't want to be known as, as you know, giving directions to, oh, by the way, we're just, we're just west of the, of the dump. You know, you'll know you're in Brevard County when you hit the dump coming um, east on 192. So that's, that's I've, again, I feel very passionately about this. And I think there's a lot of people that want to weigh in. And I think before we pull the trigger and decide that we want to be in the business of, of, conducting, or of constructing another landfill, I think we need to, to know what our options are and to know that we're making the best decision. Obviously, you know where I stand. And I think that, you know, I think at the very least, the, this board owes me that, to have the opportunity to try to find a better way and, and a more permanent solution rather than the easy one. 3,000 acres in the middle of Deseret Ranch. Think about the, the potential for environmental impacts. Think about, you know, we talked about wetland mitigation, about how we can't duplicate wetlands. Yet that's what, that's what we're proposed to do in the future at that site. We may not do it during the first cell phase. So, I mean, there's a lot of things. And, and I looked at some of the old minutes, and I've gone through the old workshop, and I've, I've looked at, you know, statements made by staff versus what reality is today and what reality was five years from those statements. And I want to make sure that the public is aware. I want to have a chance, considering how close we are in proximity to St. John's, uh, to the environmental risks that are involved. And, and, you know, we never thought we would be where we are with the lagoon today. I don't want us to be making big regrets later saying, oh, well, it was just some minor leakage. Oh, we just had a puncture in our liner. Oh, we just, you know, and, and I know that there's, there's things in place to possibly um, prevent some of that stuff. But... I think any risk is, is not a good risk. And I think impacting such a large parcel of land out there and, and identifying us with that landfill is a bad idea. So I think at the very least we owe it to the rest of our county and to our residents and to District 5 to at least look at all possible solutions. Because we don't have the answers yet. We don't have the environmental study on that that parcel that's next to Sarno. We don't have the the evaluation, at least a comprehensive evaluation on, on what if any of that 68 acres that we purchased, was it back in 1990 or maybe 91 or 89 around there? I mean, we don't have a full evaluation on that yet because that's what we purchased that for. Now we're using it for stormwater mitigation and St. John's is using it for some dredging material. So, I mean, there may be a piece there that we can use, but and I, and I believe I've, I've spoken with a few Melbourne City Council people, and they're and they're amicable to the height, um, the height variance. So I didn't mean to rant on. Obviously, this issue is very important to me, and I would hate to see us make a bad decision. So I'll I want to make a motion that we and I'll pass the gavel, and make that motion that we hold off on signing that permit, and we bring it back to the first meeting um, in. July after the break. I'll second it. Okay, so I have a motion, or you have to say it. Yeah, there's a motion by me, right? Okay. All right, motion by our, our chair. Oh, uh, not allowed to second it. I second it. Okay, oh, he can second it. as a can chair. Second? You can second I thought as I a chair. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Just so. can't move. Okay. Okay. All right. right, any further discussion? I do have a couple things. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Commissioner Tobaya. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
this question is for, for staff. Can can you tell? Can you? What is the uh, what is the implication? Should we wait till uh, June to sign that permit? What what is before staff answers that? Just so I don't get in trouble serving as chair for the moment. We're coming up on eleven. So if we could perhaps have a motion to permit us to continue going on beyond 11. So move. We have a second. Second. All right. With respect to that motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Wonderful. Okay. I apologize. So what's harm in, in waiting till June as opposed to giving authorization for the county manager to sign it uh, immediately? I don't think a couple of months is going to make that much difference. There's uh, mainly because there's still permits to be obtained. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers just is the last big permit. There's still uh, DOT permits and all that stuff that, that has to be obtained. Not only that, but to be uh, fair to uh, the other options, there's still outstanding questions that have to be answered, like we have uh, an appraisal that is being conducted on, on the Melbourne landfill that we do not have the uh, report yet. Uh, we also don't have the, even though it does, does look like there would, shouldn't be much of an issue, we don't have the answer on the uh, variance for the height. I think those that kind of information would make the board's decision a lot better. Um, I don't know if the board wants uh, an agenda item or would prefer a much freer discussion in a workshop environment, but that's up to the board. Uh, follow up, is there any cost in moving forward at, at this point? The, the question by the county manager was to give authorization to accept the or move forward with the Army Corps engineer's permit. Was that not the? That's not what he said, but. Sorry. sorry. No. Uh, sorry, Frank. Go ahead. Um, the Army Corps of Engineer permit, I'm authorized to sign. I have not done it yet. Um, there is no cost in that because all the cost has been, uh, we have spent the money to obtain it and we have the permit in front of us. There is no additional cost okay. or or um, or monetary value in that permit. The only one that we're waiting on it if for money is a check from county finance in order to submit the variance for the city of Melbourne. But we were going to do that anyway. So for for that purpose, no there's no additional cost. Okay. Um I appreciate there's a motion and a second. I'm on the other side of this argument, and let me explain why. First of all, I want to diffuse the deference to the, uh, it's ridiculous to make the reference that for zoning issues, we're comparing uh, issues that are countywide. Uh, solid waste is, is something that is, uh, is not just in District 5, it's not just in District 3. It's not like a height restriction on a hotel in, in, in Titusville. Uh, what we do with our solid waste affects each and every one of uh, our districts. So while um, I many times defer to um, zoning issues, there's absolutely no way that I would be deferring to uh, a commissioner uh, based on they don't want a, a landfill in their district. Um, I don't see any harm, um, as you mentioned, uh, for moving forward with this. Um, I think the end result uh, is the same with uh, Commissioner Isnardi and myself. I do not want to see a dump there. I think that this board has made some uh, good steps. We're currently working on RFP out there for alternative technologies. We don't know what will come of that, but I think it would be short-sighted of us not to move forward. My understanding is um, we have millions of dollars uh, help me in the neighborhood of $25 million uh, sunk in this project. Is that? It's a, a, over 24 invested, I believe, between it's the property 24 and. 24.9 right now. Right. So. <laughs> What's $100,000 between friends? Uh, $25 uh, million. I, I'd like to, um, I, th I think it would be foolish of us now with no cost not to um, get the best return on that. 
the permit is is it fair to say that if this permit was signed off on or authorized that would increase the value of that land uh, is is that a fair is that a fair assessment <clears throat> my guess yes because this is the permit that has cost the most amount of time to to be able to obtain let me ask you this question is there any way it would decrease the cost uh, no, if it, no sir because you don't have to pay attention to the permit okay so um, seeing as this is a county asset um, going forward with this permit does not co cost county taxpayers any money in fact in the long run we may see a huge benefit from it whether it is used as a uh, a, a landfill or not um, I respectfully uh, will be voting against this and um, if this one goes down I certainly would have a motion that uh, uh, we go forward uh, with this permit not spend dollar one on that project but certainly increase the value to the taxpayers and give us another uh, option uh, should other options go uh, go to the wayside for one reason or another so again for that reason I will not be supporting um, the motion on the table and uh, making another one if if this one should not get three Commissioner Pritchett Thank you. I um, I, I don't have any problem. It's waiting a couple of months to come back with it With all that being said, I know it does affect the county But it's going to affect Commissioner isn't already more than the rest of us Just she's going to have more weight on this when we start doing um, conversations it is a lot of money we've invested. We, we have to figure out how to be good stewards of that. Um, and we're, we're going to have to, I'm hoping we come back with some kind of alternative. I don't want to start spreading our footprints in other places if we don't have to. I really am hoping we can do something with the Sarno Road and that you'll have some creative ideas or we can get through <coughs> with figuring out what kind of um, hurdles we might have with that other property that's for sale there. Um, I really am looking forward to uh, starting to do some more um, recycling on the construction and some of those other things. I know it, and you know what? Maybe there's another piece of land somewhere, you know, that we, I don't know, but just some ideas. I, I hear you, Commissioner Esnardi. This is the last thing I want to do. Um, we, we're going to have to hold on to it in case we have no other efforts, but I'm hoping that we are able to come up with an idea. That's what I'm hoping. So I'm completely on board with waiting a couple of months and getting some more ideas and maybe some alternatives together. I would hit my light if I had one. Okay. I just want to say, you know, as far as talking about it being in my district, it obviously impacts my district the most, you know, and I think solid waste, I think we need to be responsible. We have 24, over 24 million invested because we spent millions in litigation. Let's not forget how we acquired this property. It was, it was sold by Deseret Ranch because we pursued it through eminent domain and we sued them for years and years. First we applied for a permit, if I'm not mistaken, we applied for a permit before we even had the land. So we withdrew it and then got the land and then resubmitted it, if I remember correctly. Waiting a few months to sign that permit, the county's not going to lose any money. But once we sign it, all it does, sure, you say you don't, you don't want a landfill there either, but not once it's zoned landfill, I mean, at, at that point, I, I mean, logic would say, I mean, the, the Deseret Ranch folks aren't going to pay $25 million for a piece of ranch land. And there's, and there's such a thing as, as not using it for its intended take. So I, don't, I mean, that's a lot of legal questions and that I wouldn't even put Ms. Bentley through without knowing where this board sits. But I think just because we can doesn't mean we should. And I think it's bad enough that we took that land under the, 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 the untrue, whether well-intended or not, argument that the Sarno landfill was going to fill a long time ago. We were able to extend it this long. We took that land, and so now we're going to devalue the land <coughs> for those folks out there because we don't care because they're going to develop it anyway. Well, guess what? I mean, would you want to develop next to a landfill? I know I don't want people driving into our county and that being the first thing they see when they come here from Disneyland. That doesn't sound like a very appealing thing. And I know we're going to do you know, class three first, but it's a bad idea all around. I think we, we should look for every alternative but this. Again, this has become a legacy issue, and this has become more of a pursuit on behalf of 
the county, whether it be commission or staff, it's become more of a pursuit of, of okay, now we, we're doing it, so let's just keep moving forward instead of looking for the best possible alternative. We should always look for another alternative. We should not have commission offices calling congressman offices trying to get permits expedited. That is wrong. That should never happen unless it comes from this board. And I appreciate the county manager holding off on allowing, or I should say, moving forward with having this signed out of respect for not just District 5, but out of respect for bringing this back to the board to decide how we move forward. I hope that, um, that the board will support, or at least the majority of us will support, um, holding off on signing that a couple of months because nothing is lost by doing that. Even if, you know, it's decided later on that we're going to go ahead and, and, and we're going to go ahead and sign that because the majority of, of the board decides to. It's not going to make a difference if it's just a couple of months, in my opinion. I mean, I, of course I care about what happens at Sarno Landfill, but that's already a landfill. I mean, we're, we, already, we already have a landfill there. Why would we want to create another one? It just doesn't make any logical sense to me. Uh, I mean, and I appreciate, Ms. Pritchett, I appreciate you, you know, at least being open to look at other options and being sympathetic to, and I don't want this in anybody else's district either. I mean, I want us to do something different. I want us to utilize Sarno to the best of our possible ability, take the, the, take the land that's zoned landfill there and see what we can do with it. I think that that's our first, that should be what we look at first. Oh, I see another light. Okay, Commissioner Smith. I agree. I have no problem looking at alternatives and looking at our options. I think that's what we're here to do. I think that's our purpose. I'm always open to options and um, I think one of the options that we need to look at at the same time is we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what this county is going to need in the way of a landfill in 25 years. So to consider selling this now takes away that option from the commission that will be sitting at that point in time because they'll have the answers. Right now, all we can do is speculate what the conditions are going to be in 25 years. But we, this is a valuable asset, and I don't think that we should consider selling it, but I think absolutely we should look at every option before we have to use it. So I'll support your, your uh, motion because, as you said, in two or three months, it's not going to make any difference when we sign it. Any other comment before I jump in? Okay. Well, I thought this was going to go 3-2, but it looks like it may be 4-1 in this case. Um, a question for staff and then a couple thoughts. With respect to the money that was spent, I, I don't anticipate by any means we'll recover 24 or 25 million where we just sell the land back to Deseret. But presumably we would recover some of that money where we just sell the money, uh, where we just sell the, the property back. I mean, that's, that's a reasonable assumption, wouldn't you say? I don't think we're really in a position to say, but I would say if you have that permit, that the opportunity that the highest best use in the terms of the value of the property would be enhanced, most likely. But, you know, <laughs> you know I'm not an expert to, to be able to give you that okay. response definitively. Okay. Now, I'll... I'll uh, address something that was mentioned by Yuri with respect to Melbourne's appetite to consider this. It's, it's interesting because uh, oftentimes with sunshine, I think a lot of us are working on the same item and just don't know it. Um, this is one of those instances. Uh, I've not talked with all seven of the folks that serve on that council, but I have spoken with more than one of them, uh, including Paul Alfrey, uh, in whose district the, the Sarno uh, facility is located. Um, with respect to the, the appetite for a variance, and he certainly appeared uh, inclined to consider a variance. Now, I don't know whether he would be amenable to going to 104 feet as, as what was uh, suggested, uh, but certainly there may be some room up to that point, maybe less, maybe all the way, uh, that he would certainly consider. And then their, their vice mayor certainly did not express any sort of um, overt opposition to the concept. Granted, she didn't give me the level of certainty that I, I felt from uh, Councilman Alfrey. Again, um, keeping in mind that he didn't agree to 104 feet, um, as, as I believe the proposal is at this point. Now, um, I think the, the important thing to keep in mind is having options is good, but my concern is if we take that step and sign that dock and we end up with something that now we can use for a landfill, 
I don't want that to then be transferred to another property owner if we sell that property with them now having the ability to turn it into a landfill that's my concern with doing it and I'm not saying that that I'm willing to write off the difference in value at this point I think Deseret is certainly well aware that if we want to turn this into a landfill we can do that and even if it doesn't have the the signature on the sheet of paper that may factor into what they're willing to pay I'm not saying give the property back to them uh, or sell it to them at a discount but if we do end up selling it and I'm, I'm saying if because I don't know whether we will or not it just depends on what's reasonable and what the options are uh, there's no reason we can't point out to them although it's already abundantly clear if we want to turn this into a landfill we can turn this into a landfill therefore it's worth more than it ordinarily would be worth even though the the zoning as as it's currently structured may not show that so with that unless there are any more comments I'll, I'll go ahead and, and bring it to vote all in favor aye aye any opposed nay all right passes 4-1 with uh, Commissioner Tobias opposed uh just so I understand in that motion because I, I didn't hear it one way or the other are we going to bring back in July an July agenda the first item? meeting an agenda item an agenda I item. like workshops but I've been to enough workshops and I was at your workshop in 2016 and I saw how the dynamic was and I I'd much rather it be in the, very much in the public view and in a public venue and give people the opportunity because people don't go to workshops they just don't they don't sit in a workshop all day long and and it's it is more staff driven and staff ran when I want this to be I want to hear from everybody not just staff so I, I prefer it to be an agenda item just don't put a lot on that agenda <laughs> if it needs to come to the you second know, that, meeting that's, yeah you, that's when we're doing the board uh, you know the tentative budget I'm not sure exactly which you know I gotta look at the dates but uh, and not until the yeah, middle of July so you said the first yeah. early meeting in July the first night meeting maybe just try to keep the agenda light if you can yeah well you know the problem with that is we're just coming back off the one month uh, well it can't be any worse than this right as far I'm, as time I'm just, goes <laughs> I'm just telling you it, will be, it may be difficult to make it a light agenda because we would not have Turn met during the month of license. June yeah but we'll do the best we can of course <laughs> okay and, I'll, and also part of that motion was to not sign that that permit I said that in my motion I understood okay. that ma'am well I was telling Frank I wasn't sure if Frank got that because he was asking to clarify yeah we we, uh, we fully understand thank you thank you and thanks for the support guys all right Miss Bentley no report Miss Pritchett just one thing I wanted to uh, give you guys a uh, uh, the community that was here the other night for the zoning I've got a few responses and one of them that really blessed my heart was some of them said they haven't liked government a long time and after watching the board the way we're respectful that they said they have their uh, faith renewed in local government so I just wanted to pass that along to y'all mm. they're so nice mr. Lober and I've got a couple things one easy and, and one a little more difficult so the non-contentious item uh, my wife and I were out I believe it was this past Sunday at the Pelock dog park in um, vice mayor uh, Debbie Thomas's portion of Melbourne uh, helping uh, councilman Alfrey build that we were out there for probably about five and a quarter hours and just I got incinerated out there um, mostly the legs I would encourage anyone who's willing to go out there uh, to please look at going out there I know that he's allowing folks to come out during the evening and he's encouraging folks to come out during the evening uh, not 11 o'clock at night by any means like now but um, in the early evening to work on that they're trying to get a grand opening for that um, in the upcoming days and they're they're really tight with respect to the schedule hence the reason that I was out there for longer than I otherwise would have been uh, to try to help them keep that schedule they have so anyone that, that wants to go out there and has some time uh, please do get in touch with Councilman Alfrey and, and see what you can do to help him even if it's only for a couple hours now the the fun more contentious item that's going to involve a motion uh, I have some language that was forwarded to me indirectly uh, by staff based on discussions that our sheriff has had with staff uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and essentially read that along with um, a couple minor modifications I'm making to be comfortable with it and I, I don't want before I make the motion I don't want anyone to presume that this means uh, that I'm in favor of increasing taxes or that I will eventually this is just giving us additional options um, so uh, the motion is as follows uh, based upon the the uh, unfunded critical needs that have been identified by the sheriff I'm moving to authorize the county manager 
to prepare in his tentative budget proposal for fiscal year 19 to 20 multiple options for ad, ad valorem tax rates, including an option that may exceed the aggregate rolled back rate in order to provide funding for the critical needs identified by the sheriff while maintaining existing service levels elsewhere, uh, as well as an option that may reduce service levels within the aggregate rolled back rate while still maintaining the most urgent critical needs identified by the sheriff. And it, again, with that, I'm not agreeing to do that uh, as a, as a, a, a finality, but I, I do want the option options available so that's my motion second for discussion I have a motion by Commissioner Lober second by Commissioner Pritchett Commissioner Lober I think that's that's appropriate we did ask him to try to stay within the aggregate but again we don't have all the numbers in so I think we need to allow him the flexibility to come back with some things and I, I'm guessing this has a lot to do with the sheriff needing a larger budget so um, I, I agree with you on that because I, I know it's going to be in his MSTU and it's his budget and ergo I, I don't think we need to have the rest of the county suffering in that. So we're going to have to have our, our manager come back with some options. Um, it's going to be a different kind of year but you know it's the, the day we're living in right now. So, Commissioner Tobias. I, think I just want to verify with staff this isn't a bad late April Fool's joke that we're playing on the new guy. I'm guessing that's not. And just to make this extremely clear for the rest of the commission, um, this is our budget. This is, this is a budget of the county commission. If taxes are raised, that will be responsibility, not of the sheriff, but of the Brevard County Commission, to make that extremely clear. I don't know how many of us are going to vote, but to shirk this on the sheriff, any constitutional office, any department, the county manager, the county staff is wrong. And, and just to be extremely clear, I will be voting uh, against this um, because um, this is our budget. OUR, the five of us up here, and we make the decisions. The sheriff presents us with a budget, and we make the decision whether or not to fulfill. There is a state mechanism if he believes he has not get a fair uh, budget with the state. They've, they've seen this. He's more than welcome should he not get the budget he thinks he deserves. Uh, but to be very clear, we need to take, no matter what the outcome of this, we need as individuals and as a commission take a responsibility for that. So thank you, uh, Commissioner Lober, for bringing this uh, forward. Um, and I understand this is just options, but right. these are options. Um, that I don't want to look at. And unfortunately, um, it's very ironic because uh, I'm doing the exact same thing that I just voted against last one, where I said I don't want to, where, where the rest of the commission <laughs> said I don't want to look at the options for the, uh, the trash heap. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm asking you to do the exact same thing here. Let's not look at these terrible options. Let's live within our means. and. Let's not support Commissioner Loper on his quixotic adventure. Go ahead. I'm not going to use a big word like that. Years ago, I probably would have had to look that up. And, and right now, I'm, I'm fairly confident I know what that means, but I'm not 100% certain. <laughs> now, with, with that said, again, I, I just want to emphasize this is not, as, you, as you're well aware, by any means a vote to say we're increasing taxes. I certainly expect there to be options that do not involve a tax increase and all else equal that's where I'm inclined to go where we to have to vote on a budget right now. But again I, I just want to see what the different options are in so far as having different degrees of impact with the, with the county departments. Uh, I can tell you the last thing I want to do is start cutting critical needs in order to, to try to play this balancing game. Uh, I can tell you I don't want to cut fire. I don't want to cut mosquito control. I don't want to cut our general fund. Uh, I don't want to cut roads and bridges. There are, there are certain departments I don't want to cut at all, uh, but that limits the amount of other areas we can cut to some that I really am not thrilled with cutting either, whether it be libraries or parks and rec. Um, but you know, one of the things that I've, I've always maintained, both up here and, and down there, and I, I anticipate I'll always maintain, is that public safety is, is one of, if not the most important functions of government. Uh, and if we're able to do what we need to do within a, a reasonable degree without increasing the, uh, the tax, by all means, that's where I'll be. Uh, but I don't have any qualms looking at options that aren't obligating me to take those options. I think this is simply giving um, an additional 
set of, of possibilities for us to consider. And you know, you may vote against it down the road. I may vote against it down the road. I just, I, I'd prefer to see what's out there. And I, I agree with you 100% that it's on us. It's not on the constitutional officers when we make budget adjustments. And if it is something where the taxes end up going up, then I'm going to have to live with that if I vote to support that. I don't know that I'm going to vote to support that, but we, we've got to look to see what the needs are and how we're able to fund them. Commissioner Pritchett. Yeah, I, I'm not even sure this, this motion is necessary. We gave the county manager direction to try to stay within the aggregate without knowing any of the variables, knowing he's going to have to come back with something anyway. So that's fine if we're doing it, and it gives him the ability not to have any heartburn with what he's got to come back with. But I expect him to come back with some types of, he always gives us options that yeah. we can go through it. So I, I think this is just an, a, a fairly easy motion, and it's just responsible to do it. Because if the sheriff ends up needing 10 million because we have terrorist attacks, I'm not going to quit doing roads and parks and everything else. So to make this even decision logically, or he's going to have to come back with some numbers. And so, county manager, I kind of looking forward to what you guys come back with. So, Commissioner Lober. And I, I just defer to, to Mr. Abate. If if you feel comfortable that you can do this with absent a motion, I'll withdraw the motion. But if you feel more comfortable with this, well, then I'm, I'm happy to leave it and we'll, we'll I, vote. I think I clearly need a motion because, uh, as you all will know, um, I specifically committed to the board during the workshop that I would not present a budget uh, proposal that went above the aggregate and you were very clear that that's where I needed to be so if uh, if I, I am and staff will be very happy to develop it in accordance with this by the way that was not a staff driven so you understand that was not a staff driven uh, motion that was a you know the sheriff wanted to know to be able to do some of the things he wanted to do what w what direction would I need to do that okay. in light of where we were and I, I apologize if it came across differently than no that. I just I, want to make sure but but we, yeah we will definitely I would really appreciate the motion if that's where we're gonna go and and I think the way it was worded gives us that flexibility to go above as well as give you an option that would be you know below the uh, the rollback in certain of the uh, MSTUs, and then the board will have to decide. Or, or what they potentially think the multiple best. options that are. No, no, that are that's below. what I'm saying. Now, I, I would anticipate there would be, you know, three, but it's too early to tell right now because there's a lot of information we don't have. You know, departments are only starting to develop their budgets. We won't have any preliminary numbers, even from the property appraiser, until June. Those will all impact where we are, but this gives us the flexibility to give you a variety of things if, if that's where the board wants to be. Okay, I'll, I'll just maintain the motion in that case. I second it. Can I, can I ask one quick question, Madam Chair? Sure. Yeah, how, how much extra, Ms. Hayes, how much extra time is this going to, um, I, 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 the, the work that goes into one budget is pretty incredible. Um, if we, ask you to come back with many different options, does that increase your workload exponentially? Um, well, if I understand correctly, we're talking about coming back with options before the board goes on a break in June. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. This would be when we submit the tentative budget in July. That's what they're talking about. There are no other budget workshops scheduled unless the board did something different. And quite honestly, we don't have a lot of time. We've only got the couple of meetings, you know, in May. So we're talking about submitting multiple budget options in July. And as much as as much as I respect Frank, this gets <laughs> this comes down to Jill. She's our she works countless hours to to put this together. And um, I just want to know how much extra work we're levying on you by asking you to come back with multiple options in a short period of time. And I apologize for misunderstanding. Uh, if we're talking about, we're just talking about options for the ad valorem tax rates and the revenue that that would generate. Um, so we can calculate different ad valorem options for the board. Um, it's just calculating what, the, what, millage rate would be required to generate a certain amount of revenue to stay within those different um, levels. So, you know, it, it wouldn't be an entire budget book like you receive a, a tentative budget book, but just options on those ad valorem millage rates. 
thank you and, and thank you for all the hard work you you do to put together just one budget so um Commissioner Pritchett. Commissioner Tobias, real quick, you said the sheriff could get a hold of the state and raise his income that way? Madam Chair? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, there, there's a mechanism for the sheriff's office, uh, any, any constitutional, any sheriff's office, should the money be appropriated from the county commission, not to his liking, there is an appeal process uh, set up with the Department of Revenue. Sorry, I'm, my mm -hmm. state statute's a little weak. Set up with the Department of Revenue where he can appeal the decision that, uh, of the county commission. Would he get it from the state then? Oh, from the I, county budget? I'm quite certain it comes back comes oh, back from okay. us. But I if he if he is not happy idea. with the decision, yeah, we, we have a, uh, just to be record, we have a very uh, we have a wonderful sheriff, and I'm not just saying mm -hmm. that because he's no longer here. But uh, many times the sheriff and county commissions are on opposite sides it gets very contentious obviously that being public safety the state uh, saw that that may they need to have a mechanism to have a, uh, a third party and and so that option is available to uh, to the sheriff should he not receive the budget that he thinks is necessary to run his department commissioner lober just real briefly miss hayes um, and i apologize for dwelling on this but I, i'm i'm curious myself now in terms of the additional amount of time that you reasonably anticipate you'd have to expend to prepare some of these options is that something you'd measure in hours days or weeks um in terms of just it, it would be you know several hours to calculate a scenario on uh different tax rates so just calculating a scenario would would take several hours once we have the information from the property appraiser's office putting the tentative budget together that entire budget with all the information mm -hmm. from the departments that's that's a lot more that's months of work so i think we're talking about as frank mentioned um, the preparing the tentative budget in accordance with the direction of the workshop but then also having options for different tax rates and that's that's what i'm looking for as well and if it's something that's ours I feel a lot better putting that on you than something that's going to really cripple your ability to accomplish work in the office. And if, if what I'm hearing is, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, this is not something that's going to somehow impact your ability to, to, to handle any other work obligations you may have. Is that a fair yeah, assessment? That's correct. All right. Thank you. Okay. Did, was there a motion? Oh, there was a second. Motion and second. You made a motion and Commissioner Pritchett made a second? Yes, ma'am. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Item passes 4 1. Okay. Commissioner Tobia. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be brief. Last week, we received a formal opinion from the Attorney General's Office rep responding to our question of whether the county has the authority to make the issuance of business tax receipts contingent upon the participation of e verify. The Attorney General confirmed our own county uh, attorney's analysis that we do not, in fact, have the authority to require participation in e verify to get said business license. I want to thank the County Attorney's Office for their assistance in securing this opinion, which is very important information, not necessarily for the board, but certainly for the citizens and lawmakers. Uh, this opinion leaves no doubt to, as to why Representative Thad Altman's bill requiring businesses to use the free e-verify system is necessary. The county has done everything it can legally do to ensure that our own contractors use e-verify. It is now up to the state to take the next step in making sure legal citizens and residents are treated fairly and uh, modern indentured servitude is not uh, used by corrupt businesses in this county. So again, thank you for uh, the support of the board to send that up to uh, the Attorney General. Thank you for the Attorney General uh, getting back with her opinion and thank you for our, our legal staff helping facilitate all this. Great. Commissioner Smith? I have a question for Eden. Um, on South Tropical Trail, we just repaved that. There were speed humps there, and they've been there since, I believe, the late 90s. They qualified at that time. The question exists now whether that road still qualifies for speed humps. So before we put money into just putting speed, speed bumps back, I would like to ask staff, staff to evaluate that 
to see if it qualifies for speed humps before we spend the money. I think that's going to be a public works issue. Um, so Mr. Denninghoff is an expert on speed humps, I believe. So do I need to make a motion or can I just direct staff to do that? I think we have to look at it and I have to I think they have to make they have to find certain criteria exist right exactly uh, that's I know that so that's what I'm asking do I need to make a motion or can we just ask him to do the oh I think he needs a motion okay so I would like to make a motion that um, staff evaluates whether South Tropical Trail qualifies for speed humps Second. I would ask one clarifying question uh, I would assume that you mean under the current rules Correct. and policies that are established by the board Correct. as opposed to what existed at the time. Correct. Okay, I have, did you get the motion? I have a motion by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Pritchett. Commissioner Tobia? I'm going to be voting against this, not because of, uh, <laughs> sorry. That's a not, shocker. Not because of, sorry. <laughs> not because of the sponsor, just there's a policy in County Commission District 3 that we don't have speed humps, and, oh, and I'm sorry, and uh, I want to be consistent on this. So, um. well, I'm not crazy about them either, but they were there, and so before I spend our money to put speed bumps back, I want to know whether I have to put them back there or if we have the discretion and say they don't qualify. I get it. I just, well, I just doing it for consistency, gotcha. not against the sponsor, just to be gotcha. clear. You're doing it to be difficult. I'll just say it how it is. I hate speed humps. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate speed humps. Pennsylvania Avenue, right? Brandywine area. Pennsylvania Avenue is the prime example of when you actually, and John Denninghoff will tell you, you actually need speed humps because there's no sidewalks, there's nowhere for anybody to walk on that road, and they fly down there like it's the Indy 500. Because when we took them out, because we were resurfacing, micro resurfacing that road, I, I believe, or just putting like a light surface on. We were on. resurfacing the road, yes. Yeah, we, we, the road has to settle for a couple of weeks. And it was like, it was chaos deciding on whether or not those needed to go back in. But I'm really glad we did because when they were out, I'll tell you what, staff didn't have to go out there long to see how fast they were driving down that road. And it's the same, you know, people every time. But I'm not a huge fan either, but I'd like to think that this is another one of those defer to the district sort of things. And so and I, and, and I think it's a great and, idea that you're studying it before you just throw yeah, them back I'll in. Yeah, be, because I will encourage reflection from the folks that live there as well. Right. Awesome. Uh, could I ask another question? It occurs to me that we, we've not done this before, so I'm, I'm trying to anticipate things that might arise. The normal po uh, policy uh, pr approach is that there's a citizen-driven petition that is uh, developed and uh, by the neighborhood and uh, the uh, uh, if it qualifies uh, under the technical requirements uh, which don't have anything to do with the petition that we then do the study a full-blown study which then talks about the speed of the vehicles and what the crash history is and all the rest and then it's under the policy currently it's up to the commissioner of the district to either agree to it or to to not do it in this particular case I uh, the uh, we don't have a petition there hasn't been a petition since uh, we created the policy as far as I know and uh, so I just want to make sure uh, we can go ahead and study it now, look at it, and come up with a full study absent the petition. Don't know if the board wants us to get the petition uh, together. Don't know, currently don't have somebody in the neighborhood that is uh, going to carry the petition around, which is the way it's typically done. Uh, we could produce a report that uh, says to the commissioner or come back to the full commission about it uh, absent the petition. So I'm just looking for a little bit of direction there on, on that. So we're deviating uh, somewhat. But I understand the question, because uh, I don't believe it would qualify under the current rules for, for speed humps. Uh, the, the classification of road it is, uh, I believe, is a minor arterial road, and uh, that would not qualify. And, and so uh, it would stop there under the current well that's that's course. what I would anticipate and and we haven't had my office has not had any request but I anticipate at some point because we've just repaved it that somebody will request some information as to if they are going to get speed humps I would like to have 
But if it's so, ultimately, I don't mean to interrupt, I apologize, but if it's ultimately your decision anyway, if you don't think they belong there and you're public works direct, I mean, you could save a lot of the aggravation. Okay, well then I withdraw that motion. No, I'm saying if, cross, if you Across if you the choose bridge to. if we get to it. I think, I think we still need think, a motion, Commissioner, simply because... They were in? The way we, yes, we, the way we're doing it is when we resurface a road, we restore the speed humps and we put them back in to meet current standards on a speed hump. Uh, and that's been our policy, that's been our approach, uh, and which is consistent with the policy that the board has established about speed humps to start out with. So this, this is a little bit different. Uh, I would point out that this road was, I believe, the very first road that got speed humps in Brevard County, uh, and it predated the establishment of the policies that we have. Okay, so I think you need to change your motion if you don't, if you want them to hold off, maybe? I, I, I think the way it was, the motion that was made, I think Mr. Denninghoff has the direction um, without the petition to determine up or down based on the current policy, and that'll give you the information that you want. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, my, okay. my motion stands. Commissioner uh, Tavaya. Can, can we modify the motion that the oh, discretion my. ends, or the discretion is with the, the commissioner in which district it, it resides is. that well that need the motions completely I mean I we're, we're going a different mechanism now so if we're going to do that we need to be very clear okay. that okay. Well, this is not going to amend that let's add that okay thing. I'll add it right okay so that's added to the motion does your second still stand yeah. second by Commissioner Pritchett all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed you got opposed right are you going to pose? He said you're going to pose it. No, I, I, if it got changed where the discretion was with the member, uh, I think that's uh, Commissioner Smith's uh, determination. So, so you, that he has it. Okay. But we just changed the process. I just want to make sure that authority ends with. We the didn't district. really change the process. We did. We circumvented. We circumvented the okay. petition process. <laughs> no, because the things were already in place. That's why it's not required. <laughs> Motion passes 5-0. Let's move on. Okay, and I have one uh, one other thing, and this this will be quick. I want to thank the Marine Resource Council for giving me the award for outstanding service to the Indian River Lagoon um, by an elected official. That's so I want to thank them publicly. Very nice. That's nice. All right, and there's me. Just quick. Um, I have a chance possibly, and I, you know, I still have this sticker on my on my credit card. I don't even claim mileage. I don't do anything, but I want to ask the board's permission to possibly go to D.C. for a day or two. If that's okay, it's, on or it's it's obviously on commission business. <laughs> make a motion but to approve your travel. Second. Okay, it's about the space force stuff, and it's about a meeting at the Pentagon. So if I can get that meeting and those couple of meetings, it's going to be a big deal. So, motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Smith. Yes. Just a real real quick question. Do you have any idea what it's going to run? I don't. It's just flight. I don't even think. I think my hotel's covered. I believe. Private but, jet or? Oh no, I doubt it. <laughs> Okay. I've never flown first class, and that's an Ooh. honest admission, okay. isn't it? So, okay. Fair enough. You can, pro um, you can be I trust certain it. I'll be economy. All right. Motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. I'm surprised you voted for that, Commissioner Tobias. All right. And I'm trying to think of, oh, if there's anything else. I know. That's it. Meeting adjourned. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.